Milwaukee, Wisconsin, on the banks of Lake Michigan, home of Cheeseheads and Badgers, and the NCAA Ice Hockey Championship. March has always brought out the best in college hockey, a no-holds-barred sport. 17 different schools have laid claim to being national champs in ice hockey. When the week began, there were four schools still in the hunt for the 1997 championship. That number has dwindled to two. And when the day is over, only one team will be national champions. For North Dakota and Boston University, it's been a long ride to the championship game. The championship is what every player shoots for, an accomplishment that's hard to describe. Oh, un unbelievable. Yeah. It would, it would mean everything in the world. Oh, it's just, you know, a dream come true. Bradley Center in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, where in a few minutes the Boston University Terriers will meet the North Dakota Fighting Sioux for the 1997 championship. Hi, everybody. I'm Dave Shea along with Bob Norton. We're glad to have you on board for this, the 50th anniversary of NCAA hockey. North Dakota expected to be here. The Fighting Sioux had an outstanding year, but it was not until 1987 that the Fighting Sioux played for the national championship and won it. A great cast of characters. Hobie Baker winner, Tony Herkus, Bob Joyce, Ian Kidd. They also have what every championship team must have is a great goaltender. That year, they had a kid in the pipes by the name of Ed Belfour. Well, you know, Eddie Belfour is a great hockey player, but Aaron Schweitzer has played superbly for this North Dakota team out of Regina, Saskatchewan, played for the Regina Pat Canadians. One of the youngest kids in the NCAA tournament, just turned 19, but since the middle of the year, he's bulwarked this North Dakota team, played superbly. Young goaltender, but does it all in the nets, has a record for shutouts in the season. At the other end of the ice, Michelle LaRock got a Dieppe, New Brunswick. Last seven games, 1.61 goals against average, just had a tremendous end of the season. Now, while the Fighting Sioux were expected to make it as the number two seeds in the West, BU, a uh, winner two years ago, was not expected to be here. We'll be back to tell you more about the Terriers in just a moment. Well, there's the Boston University Terriers, no strangers to the championship game. The Terriers have won four NCAA ice hockey titles. Bob, I'm going to wonder how much the experience factor is going to mean in this one. Well, they've been here before. They've been in a lot of tournament competition, but this is a very good North Dakota team. They're playing with great quickness up front. They present a lot of problems. Well, there's no question, as does the Drury line go, so goes BU. Yeah, Dagum and Drury and Sylvie have played so well for Boston University. Dagum joined them from Finland in January. The thing that makes them exceptional is they all pass the puck very, very well. What is it that makes Chris Drury so good? Well, I'll tell you, one of the things is 31 points in 27 tournament games. Hockey East player, the indomitable kind of guy, works very hard offensively and defensively. And the other guy, Bates, what a big play player Bates has been over his career at Boston University. 33 points in 38 tournament games, comes up with huge plays. Well, it's a big play team like BU against a team that's been pretty darn consistent all season long. Of course, it always comes down to goaltending, Bob. Schweitzer and LaRock, they've been on top of their game in the postseason. We should expect the same today. We'll be back with the opening face-off. The 1997 NCAA Ice Hockey Championships are brought to you by Odor Eater's Foot Powder. Now destroys odor with baking soda. Absorbs wetness, too. And by Anderson Windows. Worry-proof. Time-proof. Anderson Windows. Welcome back to Milwaukee in the Bradley Center. We're just about set to go with this championship game. Jack Parker played on BU championship teams as an assistant coach on championship teams and has coached championship teams in Boston. The Terriers got here with a regular season that was uh, kind of a roller coaster ride. They won the hockey's regular season and tournament titles, then needed overtime to beat Denver and then the stunning upset of Michigan. Meanwhile, Dean Blaze, North Dakota's Fighting Sioux, had an outstanding regular season. They drew a first round bye after winning the WCHA tournament, beating Cornell in the regional finals and then duplicating that score over Colorado College. We're just about set to go. Sean Bates and Jason Blake to square off. And we're underway at the Bradley Center. John Coleman trying to dump it in the zone. Brad Williamson there for North Dakota. The Sioux 
do very well with their speed and quickness getting the puck out of the zone. That was something Michigan had a problem with the other night. He right away, a little bit different four check to start the game. In the semifinal, they played one man all night long against Michigan. They're getting after North Dakota with two early in the game. Let's see if that continues. Icing against BU. North Dakota was planning on playing Michigan, as was everybody. But Blaze and his mates had to shift gears for this one. It's all mental at this time of year, and basically what we did is, uh, as a coaching staff, just thought right away from no chance at all to almost a 50% chance. Here we are in the hunt with BU and, and some optimism, whereas you're playing Michigan, then you need great goaltending and every possible break and advantage to go your way. And that now it's just uh, we, we have to play real good and have a chance. But playing Michigan, we didn't think there's no way at all. Mike Sylvia tripped up in the corner. Puck loose. Jeff Ulmer hard into Chris Drury. Centering pass. Shot and a save by LaRock. He had Henderson right on the doorstep. BU trying to break it back. Three on two for the moment. In the slot, Sylvia shot and it's stared up over the glass by Schweitzer. Now, uh, David, that last series in the Boston University end is where BU has to be extremely attentive. What North Dakota does is play very effectively on the forecheck. You know, they're after you, after you, after you, and all of a sudden there's someone all alone in front of the net with a puck on their stick. They've scored six goals in their last two games. The only team to score more than two goals against Boston University has been three by Denver in the final of the Eastern Regional. Excellent forechecking there by North Dakota, and they caught the puck up, you caught the puck up, but then they pop out with it right inside the hash mark. Harrison Bull on the draw to the left of Aaron Schweitzer and the BU captain and the centerman for North Dakota both whistled out of the circle. Lockator to take the draw against Hoopstein. Hoopstein winning it back to the point, but it's kept in by Pody and BU is shot the save by Schweitzer. Loose puck, Lockator couldn't get to it. Pody just inside his line has his shot blocked and North Dakota breaks it back four on two. Hoopstein trying to get around Pody. Couldn't pass it out in front. He fanned on the backhand. Panzer into the boards and the Terriers started out. Cody regrouping at his own line as the Terriers changed up. Dangerous pass for Shane Johnson just behind him. On the move, Harris trying to leave it for Albie O'Connell. The play was checked by Peter Armbrust, the freshman. Armbrust and O'Connell, Bull. Aaron, all battling in the right wing corner. Aaron walking off the board, speeding Johnson at the point. Hit shot, save, rebound, and a penalty coming up as Aaron was interfered with before he could get to the puck. A delayed call. Coleman and a shot saved by Schweitzer. BU continues to control. Drury onto the ice, avoiding Ziggs check. Into the corner for base. Alvio O'Connell in deep. BU with an extra skater with the goaltender out on the delayed penalty call. Drury from behind the net couldn't control the pass and the whistle blows. Well, BU with some great sustained pressure on freshman goaltender Aaron Schweitzer. Now, there's a difference between the way BU played Michigan very cautiously in the semifinal to the way they played North Dakota early on in this game. Jesse Bull's going to pick up the penalty right in front of the goal center. A hooking call on Bull, the sophomore out of Fairball, Minnesota, played for Shattuck St. Mary's and the St. Paul's Vulcans. I'll tell you one thing, North Dakota does not take many penalties. Keep your eye on 15. There's a trip right in front of the net as he takes down number 16, Chris Heron, the freshman out of North Toronto, North York, Ontario. I'll give you a stat, uh, Dave, that really shows how few penalties North Dakota takes when we get a break. Dane Litke, North Dakota captain around the boards, kept in by Chris Kelleher. This is Mike Sylvia for John Coleman. Coleman and Kelleher at the points. North Dakota able to chip it down into the Terrier zone with Ian Calais in on the board check. Kelleher is the guy you got to watch. Seven of his nine goals have come on power play. BU 23% effectiveness in power play situations. North Dakota, an outstanding team, struggled a little bit in shorthand. They have scored on 23% of the time, have eight shorthanded goals. Jason Blake, very dangerous, has four. That's clear by Mark Pivots, who's right on net. Drury banks it around the boards. The only one there, though, is Adam Calder, the sophomore center. 
Chipping it ahead. Matt Henderson in the forecheck on John Coleman. Kelleher slows down Calder, and Kelleher will have to play it. Now, he went one for four against North Dakota in the two-game series back in December. They took a lot of penalties themselves. North Dakota went four for 11. Coleman too far ahead for O'Connell. Calder at center ice. Couldn't hook up on the feed for Curtis Murphy. Really offensive-minded defenseman for the fighting two. Jason Blake in on the four check. 45 seconds left to go on the power play. And Blake controls and feeds it back to Williamson as the fighting Sioux elect to kill off some time. Now the puck is clear. Tom Pody and Shane Johnson have to move it up ice for the Terriers. Johnson, Ben O'Connell, he just got a piece of it to avoid the icing. But the Sioux are still able to control. Bodie did a good job to keep it away from Delay in the neutral zone. And Bodie starts the rush over the line, tries to sift through the defense. Bodie in deep. Checks behind the net. A good play by Brad Williamson, and he clears. I tell you, North Dakota's done an exceptional job defensively here. Outside of the first 20 seconds, BU hasn't been able to muster much of an offense. Most of it's a good center zone defense, just like that. Well, Bentley is up as Jesse Bull is back on the ice. So the Sioux effectively kill off the first BU power play. Matt Wright. Leaving it for Captain Bill Pierce offside the call. 15-38 remains in this first period. We're scoreless on ESPN. Welcome back, everyone. Bradley Center in Milwaukee. One of the guys you have to control if you're North Dakota. You've got to control Drury. Bang him into the boards. Drury almost ended up on your sofa at home. There'll be a lot of hitting in this one, especially by BU. North Dakota hoping to be able to respond in kind. Bucket shot the length of the ice. Icing against the Fighting Sioux. Face off to Aaron Schweitzer's right coming up. One of the things that uh, Boston University has got to keep in mind, they had a tendency, particularly in the early part of the season, to take a lot of, uh, a lot of penalties. They have nine fewer power play opportunities than their opponents over the course of the season. North Dakota, on the other hand, has 53 more power play opportunities than their opponents. North Dakota team does not take very many penalties. BU, is in the, at the midpoint of the season, had taken a lot. They've cut it down since that time. Jason Ulmer won the draw as the puck slides aimlessly through the top of the crease. Here, spot to keep it in, couldn't. Here comes Armbrus down the left side. Feed and a save off of Brad DeFaul by Michelle LaRock and a penalty coming up. Interference will be the call against Boston University. Brad DeFaul, freshman, 6'2", 205 pounds. When he gets his weight behind the shot, he gets plenty on it. Well, one of the guys that has a tendency to take a few for BU is Billy Pierce. Uh, he got a game misconduct last night and a hit from behind. This is an interference call at center ice on Pierce. It's gonna put North Dakota on power play. North Dakota over the course of the season, 23% effectiveness on power play. LaRock here, shot from the outside. Very strong, stays up. Little butterfly move right there. Knees toward the middle and kicks it off to the side. Matt Henderson whistled out of the circle. Adam Calder will take the draw for North Dakota against Drury, and Drury wins it. Coleman around the boards and out of the zone. BU's penalty killers, Mike Sylvia and Chris Drury up front. Kelleher and Coleman at defense. They have 10 shorthanded goals. Drury has four of them, Bates three. Curtis Murphy, defenseman. Intercepted by Sylvia, who turns and clears. Hustling back, Dane Litvey with Drury right on him. Schweitzer out, though, having to play it himself. Adam Calder, outstanding sophomore sentiment. For the first goal of the semifinal win over Colorado College. He carries over the line, trying to feed ahead for Panzer. Did not work. Murphy at the left point. Chris shot in on LaRock and hit Kelleher out in front. And O'Connell is able to clear. Dave, the last time these two teams played out in North Dakota in December, North Dakota, 4 for 11 on power play in a two-game series, had pretty good success. Not much here. Pass intended for David Hookstein, a little bit too far ahead of the sophomore winger. Murphy forced to just bank it into the zone. Pody on it there for BU. Tom Pody, freshman defenseman, intercepted by Williamson, who bats it down. He has to play it himself, or it would have been a hand pass to Ian Pelay. BU looking to break it out. Degerman. Degerman has Bates with him. Shane Johnson coming late. Johnson holding, looking. Right now, he's pinned to the boards by Curtis Murphy, but he's killing time. Only 35 seconds left in the fighting two power play. And that situation, Johnson played up front there, got caught inside, but he's played a lot as a wing over the
over the course of this season, very comfortable in that position. He's played left wing and defense frequently in the same game. Mark Pivens, senior defenseman, starts the rush off by with 15 seconds left on the power play. Mitchell dumps it in. LaRock plays it himself. Kevin Hoogstein intercepts. Centers. Litke from the head of the slot. Shot it wide. Shane Johnson, uh, or Dan Ronan, I should say, may have gotten a piece of that shot. Well, LaRock's going to have to be very, very careful on the clear. Hoogstein did a superb job of anticipating the clear. Fed it to the point. Great opportunity. Jason Blake dumps it in. Penalty is up. Both teams at full strength. North Dakota in the middle of a change. Mike Soviet cautiously through center ice over the line. Drops it off for Drury. Drury tried to sift around the defense. Lost control of the puck on the dribble. Calder tried to intercept at the point. Big fires it back in. Soon have to clear the zone. And it goes all the way back down into the North Dakota end. Murphy for Big. Intercepted by Drury. Offside is the call. 12.33 remains in this scoreless first period. BU and North Dakota will be back in just a moment. Welcome back, everyone. 12.33 left in the first period. Uh, Boston University dodges a bullet here as LaRock gets the puck behind the goal line. Looks right, doesn't look left. Throws it right on Kevin Hookstein's stick. He feeds Lindy at the point. Bang! Great chance North Dakota shoot it wide. Gonna have to be a little careful the next time he has a roll around. Look right and left. BU has outshot North Dakota 5-2 thus far in the early going. Chris Heron tried to hook up with Albio Connolly, just lets it slide into the zone. It's not going to gain the line in time for an icing call. Sean Bates over trying to check pressure defense with Tim O'Connell. Jason Blake, fine sophomore centerman who can scoot, works his way through center ice as Calais. Can't get it to Ian Calais. Gets it back. Blake tried to center it, hit the back of the net. Hands are out in front. Nobody home. It goes back to the point. Teed up there by O'Connell off the glove of LaRock. It looks like it might have gone wide, but Michelle LaRock got a piece of it anyway. Coleman trying to bank it out. O'Connell again whistles one high and wide. Pivots can't get to it as O'Connell makes the feed. Heron leaving it for Bates. Bates for Heron. Heron can't get it up over Schweitzer. Oh, great opportunity for BU. He tried to pass it. I don't think he tried to get it up. He could have hit an upper under the crossbar. He tried to slip it across the base. Right back is Drake Quebec with a shot on and a save for Schweitzer. Bobby Hansen set it in deep. Peter Donatelli, another Clark, played for BU back in the 80s. Tom Pony now, top of the right circle. Wrist shot in Schweitzer, save. Hansen, rebound, score! Peter Donatelli! Hansen was there for the initial rebound. Band on it, but Donatelli was there to park it behind Schweitzer, and the Terriers grab the early lead. Well, I'll tell you, good things happen. The kids who work awful hard, and Peter Donatelli, fourth line right wing for BU, but I'll tell you, that fourth line has been superb at the tail end of the season. Hanson flips it over. Peter Donatelli out of St. Sebastian's North Providence, Rhode Island. Sixth goal of the season, and has he worked hard, has been a superb player for Boston University over the last month of the season. That fourth line has come along for them. Haven't just been a bunch of guys to get 40 seconds in and then get them off. They've had some great shifts, and Donatelli, his sixth of the season. So BU with the early lead, and it seems to have meant an awful lot to every team that has won in both regionals. Grab that early lead and put the other team behind the eight ball. Here's Dan Lacatour, wrist shot. He hit a skate out in front. Bat right, dumps it in low. Dane Litchie there for North Dakota, and it's chipped out to center ice. Dave Donatelli from Pony at 8.44. Boston University 16-1-4 over the season when they score first. Bacatour checked by Jesse Bull behind the net. And Bull starts it up the left side. Out to center ice. His pass off over the stick of Jay Panzer. Pierce will dump it in. BU wants a change, but this will be icing. So with 10.32 left to go in the first period, BU with a 1-0 lead. And coming up tomorrow on ESPN, it's the NCAA Women's Championship in basketball from Riverfront Coliseum in Cincinnati, Ohio. Old Dominion against the defending champion, Tennessee Balls. That's tomorrow at 8.30 p.m. on ESPN. Welcome back, everyone. Nine to two. Shots on goal early on. And North Dakota, very good offensive team. 
as was Michigan, stifled uh, in the first period by Boston University's defense. Pitch big, good play to keep it in at the left point. Shot knocked down, penalty coming up, save off the shot by Matt Henderson. And we're going to get another interference call on BU. It'll be Kelleher. Yeah, Kelleher's going off for interference right in front of the net, right outside the goal crease. Thought they might call a goal crease violation on Ulmer, but they call interference on Kelleher. And that hurts uh, Boston University because Kelleher, over the last month of the season, has been, I think, their best defenseman. And, uh, you know, and that's his situation at the end of the game against Michigan with seconds ago Kelleher was on the ice right there Kelleher knocks Omer down no question about that call right in front of the official North Dakota remember I mentioned that uh, North Dakota in a two game series had 11 power plays against Boston University and they have a tendency to take penalties North Dakota doesn't take many Litke's shot knocked down by Calais and deflected just wide of LaRock that was close to a high stick Whitney and Murphy at the points. Filet with Kevin Hookstein and Jason Blake up front on this North Dakota power play. Pierce slipped and fell as he tried to bring it across. Calais the guy you got to watch out of White Court. Alberta has 11 power play goals on the season. AU, O'Connell controls at center ice and dumps it back in. Jack Parker getting some fresh legs on the ice. He has 22 power play goals, does Calais, over two seasons. So no fluke this year. Murphy just saw John Coleman in time to avoid a check. But lost control of the puck. Here's Jason Blake. Go, Red, go. Playing it back to Litke. Litke ahead for Ian Calais. Calais has Hookstein breaking to the net. Pass was blocked by Dan Rodin. Calais had a step on the BU defense, but Ronan blocked the centering pass. Here's Litke, top of the circle. Rich shot through traffic, save, rebound. Up high over the glass by Jason Blake, and he puts both gloves to his helmet as if to say, oh, how could I do that? Uh, Jason Blake, the outstanding sophomore out of Moorhead High School, Moorhead, Minnesota, a transfer from Ferris State. LaRock is going to make the save off the flipper from Litke inside, and Blake is going to have it and just have a backhander, an upper, uh, trying to get it underneath the crossbar, but puts it over the glass. He knows he has LaRock down and out on this, so watch LaRock trying to struggle to get over. Wide open side. Oh, boy, he misses. Woo. He knew it. <laughs> He's a good hockey player, Hobie Baker finalist. Had a goal versus Colorado College in the semifinal. Four game winners on the season. He'd like to have that one. Well, with the penalties now up, uh, no, excuse me, 52 seconds left to go on this North Dakota power play. Jack Come Parker on. sends out Mike Sylvia and Chris Drury to try to kill off the remaining time. Buck dumped in, Shane Johnson on it first. Calder slowed it down, but good hustle on the play by Tom Pody. He's able to clear the puck for the Terriers. Sylvia's a very good defensive player. He and Drury did a superb job against Michigan in short hand. Almost a turnover. Drury trying to pick the puck, and he does. Sylvia moving in. Drury couldn't get the rolling puck. Sylvia just snapped that one off. Put the puck. Adam Calder with 17 seconds left. Starts it up ice. Players down back behind the play. Centering pass, Hoopstein around one defender, tripped up, puck is loose, LaRock pokes it away, Henderson shot, oh, what a save by LaRock, he got it with the blocker, what a save by Michelle LaRock, and the BU fans come to their feet, here's Mike Sylvia, the penalty is up, BU can't dump it in, they're trying to get a line change, Jeff Kelty tries to clear, Matt Henderson intercepts, centering pass, looking for Hoopstein, LaRock intercepts it, ties it up. 8.04 left to go in this first period. Peter Donatelli, the lone goal scorer thus far. It's BU 1, North Dakota nothing. Back on ESPN in a moment. Bradley Center, Milwaukee, BU 1, North Dakota nothing. I'll tell you, LaRock throws this one out into the black hole, right out into the middle, and then he makes his own save, puts it out there, and then... Matt Henderson out of White Bear Lake High School in White Bear Lake, Minnesota, snaps one off, and LaRock saves himself. John Bates and Jason Ulmer, and Ulmer wins it. Litke, save LaRock, rebound, save LaRock. Made a beauty on, on uh, Jensen Ulmer, who was in tight for the rebound, but LaRock had the short side help. Litke fights to keep it in at the point and does. Armbrust. Fan somewhat on that clearing. Homer in the corner, looking for Brad to fall. On the left wing boards, Armbrook. Now Coleman and B able to tip it out. 
BU's top line on against the Fighting Sioux's fourth line right now. Yeah, freshman line for North Dakota, but they had pretty good pressure. Team Blaze changes that line up now. Chris Heron loses it at center ice. And offside is the call as Kevin Hoogstein carried in and Jason Ulmer was just a stride inside the zone headed for the bench. Now coming up on ESPN, we've got racing across America for you, the Jim Beam Stakes. Part of the Dubai World Cup Series. That's tonight at 6 o'clock from Florence, Kentucky. Another stop on the way to Louisville in early May. Well, I'll tell you, one of the things that North Dakota's trying to do is keep these guys honest and having a little collision there right at center ice with Jason Omer, the two freshmen, Chris Heron out of North York, Ontario, and Jason Omer out of World Cup, Saskatchewan. And Lacatour around the board. Lacatour and Wright go after it, along with Panzer. Jay Panzer will start it up ice for the Fighting Sioux. Panzer over the line. Hey, good. Dumped it off onto the left wing, and Jesse Bull sends it in. Panzer, North Dakota kid, a native out of Grand Forks Central High School. Curtis Murphy takes the shot down low to Bull. Panzer shot to save. Curtis Murphy, the defenseman, was way up on the attack. Laurent with the save off of Mitch Vig, and he holds on for a faceoff. And North Dakota beginning now to get into the flow of the game offensively. Well, this was a North Dakota show by North Dakota kids here. Jake Panzer out of Grand Forks. Mr. Hockey in North Dakota in 1994. Grand Forks Central High School. Get the original, get the original shot. He gets it out to Mitch Vig, the big defenseman. Six foot three, 200 pounds out of Bismarck, North Dakota. And Big just hammers one. LaRock makes the save and freezes the rebound. A little, not a lot of North Dakota, not many North Dakota kids on this North Dakota team, but the ones that are out here, very, very good hockey players. Big out of Bismarck. Jake Panzer out of Grand Forks. Timmy O'Connell, another Grand Forks Central kid. O'Connell played on the 1995 Grand Forks Central High School team and won a state championship out there. Bob, North Dakota looks like it's holding a team meeting out of out in front of Michelle LaRock each time down. Well, I thought BU did a pretty good job of handling that, and I think what happens most of the time, LaRock does a pretty good job of handling rebounds, as does Schweitzer. This is the matchup Dean Blaze wanted. Calder's line on the Drury line for BU. Big fights to keep it in and does. Calder checked down low by Dan Rodin. Drury there trying to dig it out. Along with Jeff Holder. Let it go, Red. Let it go. Thank you. Here, referee Mike Shigo yelling, let it go, Red. And, well, unfortunately for North Dakota, they let it go on Mike Sylvia, who drew an interference penalty, and BU is going to get the man advantage. Yeah, I think it's an elbow call on Henderson. It could have been interference day because it was both, both interference and an elbow. But Matt Henderson, the, ju the junior out of White Bear Lake, Minnesota, right along the board, puts the elbow up into Sylvia's chin, and he's going to go off for two minutes BU on power play. They have a one nothing lead at 6.26 remaining in the first period. Peter Donatelli out of North Providence, Rhode Island. Tom Pody on the helper. A look at Matt Henderson, junior left winger. Dean Blaze wanting Henderson and line mates Adam Calder and Jeff Ulmer to be on the ice as much as possible when Chris Drury's line is on. Right now, Drury is on with line mates Mike Sylvia and Tommy Deggerman. They're up front on the power play. Kelleher and Coleman will be at the points. Ian Calais and Jason Blake, the penalty killer, is up front for the Fighting Sioux. one nothing. BU, Peter Donatelli, the goal. Kelleher's got the big shot from the left point, fires it into the right wing corner. Blake on it there first, chips it out of the zone. They just haven't been able to establish the zone in the power play opportunity, plus the few seconds of this one. North Dakota's doing an excellent job oh, man, of covering the middle, forcing the dump, getting to the dump first, and throwing it out of the zone. Called her on the forecheck there, yeah, just nice soft forecheck. Don't lose yourself. Get back and cover the middle. John Coleman right up the gut for Mike Sylvia. I think the puck stuck in his pants and now finally drops to the ice. He finds it and dumps it in. John Bates in on Mark Pivots. Sylvia trying to stick handle. Gets around one man, moves out front and falls, and the Sioux are able to clear. Good defensive play by Curtis Murphy. Knocked the stick out of Sylvia's hands. That helped. So BU has 50 seconds left. This their second power play. Onto the wing, Shane Johnson pokes it ahead. Alby O'Connell on it first. Brad Williamson right on him. O'Connell trying to work his way away from Williamson. Puck comes back to Johnson at the point. 
Centering pass intended for O'Connell went right between his skates. Cody, top of the circle. Fakes, big shot, score! That was Chris Drury who was set up to the right of Aaron Schweitzer. A perfect feed from Tom Pody. And Drury makes it 2-0, BU. Well, North Dakota has to be very attentive to Lockature 25 in front of the net. He's taking up a lot of territory. Lockature right in the middle. Pass goes over. Beautiful pass from Pody. Watch him thread the needle with this one. Fakes the shot. Now they have to watch Lockature in front. He's taking up a lot of space. That gets the goaltender's attention. And Lickie's Drury right by the faceoff dot to the left of the goaltender. Schweitzer, as you look at it, gets number 38. And for Chris Drury, that's his 10th power play goal of the season. And Ronan was able to chip it out. The Sioux had to stay out of the zone as it would have been a delayed offside. Kelty for Bobby Hansen. Now chipped in the zone by Greg Quebec. Back on it, Curtis Murphy. Picking up speed as he carries out of the zone. Murphy still in control. Curtis Murphy on the move. Centering pass blocked by Ronan. He's made two big plays here in the first period. Centering pass shot by Ulmer. Save the rock. Rebound loose. And finally covered up for a whistle. The freshman, Jason Ulmer, whistled a shot at LaRock, but he's able to cover up. BU2, North Dakota nothing in the first period of the 1997 championship. Well, there's Chris Drury, once a champion, always a champion. Drury, part of the 1995 BU NCAA champs, and also a member of the Little League World Series champions from Trumbull, Connecticut. That's Drury on the mound. Oops, that looked like a mistake, but it stayed in the ballpark. And Drury was a champion at the tender age of 12. Right now, he's in line to become a champion again in 97, but we've got a long way to go. BU leading it 2-0 over North Dakota. His Fairfield prep team, his high school team down in Connecticut, was a state champion as well. Uh, it's, uh, you know, champion seem to, championship seemed to follow him. That right. Nice centering pass. Over the line, Bill Pierce. On the wing. And Lockatour was ridden off the play. And Jay Panzer was started up ice, lost control, and was able to just flip it ahead to Jesse Bull, who just cooks it down into the BU zone. John Coleman there, checked by Kevin Hoopstein. Panzer checking Kelleher. Chris Kelleher handling it out of the zone, off the skates of right, and onto the stick of Mark Pivots. BU getting goals from Peter Donatelli and a power play goal from Chris Drury to take a 2-0 lead with 3.20 now left in the first period. North Dakota does a good job clogging up the neutral zone. The BU on the turnover, Sean Bates, high shot off the shoulder of Aaron Schweitzer and over the glass. Well, let's take a look at the Taco Bell intermission report and coming up we'll check in with ESPN News and we'll also have highlights from this Excellent first period of up and down action between BU and North Dakota. You know, if you're a North Dakota fan, you have to be a little concerned at this point, and I think concerned that North Dakota might have come out a little bit flat in this game. You know, thinking, well, we're not playing Michigan. We've got a Boston University team that we can beat, but, you know, to beat BU, uh, they had to fire the same way they would have had to fire to beat Michigan, and it has not happened thus far in the first period. Jason Blake trying to work it out of the zone. Ian Calais flips it in wide of LaRock. Shane Johnson back on it first. Williamson, a good job to keep it in at the right point. Jason Blake. Help from David Hoopstein. It comes loose for Williamson down low. He could not hook up with Hoopstein. And BU starts it up ice. Heron centering for Sean Bates. He can scoop, but North Dakota gives him no room with which to work. Blake avoids a check, and he'll start it back up ice. So far, BU's done a pretty good job, Bob, of minimizing the great speed and quickness of North Dakota. And what they have in La Rock has been the difference in the net. The Tommy Noble, a backup goaltender, was the goalie on the last NCAA championship team, and La Rock's beaten him out the last three weeks of the season. Murray lost his stick in the puck, but Hoopstein couldn't make a play. North Dakota has picked up the intensity on the forecheck. Sylvia over the line, offside is Drury, who dove to get back on side. It was just a little late. Well, North Dakota was preparing for Michigan. BU a surprise opponent. Sean Bates thinks that works to the Terriers. 
I think it does work to our advantage. Um, you know, hopefully, you know, they might think, well, it's BU. You know, they were lucky to beat Michigan. But, you know, we're going to come out with the same game plan we did with Michigan, bumping any chance we can. And uh, hopefully we can uh, jump on them off the bat. Well, that's exactly what they've done, but a little bit, diff little bit different game plan. You remember, David, against Michigan, the semifinal. One man four check, keep guys back. They're a little more confident against this North Dakota team. They've played them twice. They're going at them much more aggressively than they went at Michigan. Mitch Vig fires in. Brad DeFoss, first one in on it for the Sioux. He draws the crowd. Jason Ulmer check. Bill Pierce, the BU captain, leads it for John Coleman, the senior defenseman. Wing to wing. In the skate, Pierce controls over the line, holding. Takes a heavy hit, leaving it for Matt Wright. Kelleher tries to jump up in the play, and North Dakota breaks it back out. Pierce back on defense with Cody Curtis Murphy. Shot it wide, short side. Murphy gets his own shot back. Centering pass didn't click, and Kelleher just banks it out of the zone. Well, that was a pretty lucky play because they were on a chain, all messed up defensively, and they survived. Boston University of North Dakota not able to take advantage of the switch. Offside is Ulmer. Jeff Ulmer tried to leave it for brother Jason, but Ulmer, that is Jeff, backed into the zone, put himself offside. 117 left to go in this first period. Well, I tell you, North Dakota. 117 remaining in the first period. Pretty good bangs of their own as Pierce gets knocked over by number 11 out of a dime of Minnesota, the freshman Peter Armbrust. He was a football and hockey player at a dime of high school, was Armbrust, and uh, shows a little football background right there as he tossed a block, knocked Pierce over. I think one thing the BU staff thought might be a factor is if BU could grab an early lead, North Dakota. Not having been here, and a lot of the BU players having played for the title two years ago, maybe North Dakota might wonder if maybe uh, they weren't ready to face a BU club. And that's what the Terriers have done, grab the early lead and uh, maybe make the Fighting Sioux question themselves just a bit. Well, there's lots of game left, 106 left in this period. This is an outstanding North Dakota team. They've sort of uh, caught up in the shots on goal a little bit over the course of this period. They're starting way behind, 8-2 early in the first period. They have yet to translate their quickness into effective forecheck consistently against Boston University, but there is a long way to go. Two periods plus a minute and six. Uh, much too early to be giving the game away to BU. Litke has his shot blocked. Williamson jumps up, can't get the shot off. His error block it, and Bates is able to poke it out to center ice. North Dakota and BU played twice during the season. The two-game series at Grand Fork. North Dakota won easily the first night. BU battled for a 3-3 tie the next night. Yeah, but the Rock had to make 47 saves the second <laughs> night to get the tie. L.A. with Hoogstein. David Hoogstein dumping it in. Jeff Kelty banking it off the glass and out to center eyes where Curtis Murphy has it. Mark Pivot waits, has to wait a little more. Hoogstein and Calais were still in the zone. Yeah, well, they were out of, t out of gas in the tank, trying to make a line change. Took them some time to get out of the zone. Drury was intercepted, checked Blake at center eyes. Sylvia leaved it for Drury. For Sylvia, tried to get it back for Drury and hit escape. Then deflected right through the crease. Jeff Homer couldn't control. Blake lifts it out to center ice. Shane Johnson settles the bouncing puck down, clears it out to center ice. Just on is Jesse Bull. He has a hit shot high off the glass as the horn sounds, signaling the end of period number one. I think Boston University could have made it three quite easily. Sylvia had a three-on-one. He was a centerman in a three-on-one situation, and he's had two opportunities tonight. One he tried to move over to Bates, and one he's tried here to move over to Drury. They get a good transition in center ice. Little move by Drury into Sylvia. And then Sylvia, instead of shooting the puck, tries to get it back to Drury. Might have been a little crowded on review to get that shot off. Good defense by North Dakota. And they keep this thing two to nothing heading into the second period. We've played 20 minutes of hockey at the Bradley Center in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. After one period, it's Boston University 2, North Dakota nothing. Inside the Fighting Sioux dressing room between periods one and two, North Dakota trailing Boston University two to nothing as we're getting set for period number two. Welcome back to the Bradley Center, everybody. Dave Shea and Bob Norton. Bob, I thought the first period 
Uh, BU played like it's been here before to play for the championship. North Dakota a little tentative. Well, they were tentative in that first period, but some of that might have had to do with thinking BU was a softer game opponent than Michigan was going to be. I think that Coach Blaze will get them right in this second period. This is a great North Dakota team. They can fly. They haven't quite flown yet. Well, they certainly have got the butterflies out of their system. BU was here two years ago and won it. I asked John Coleman to make a comparison. In 95, it was, it was kind of a mission. It was a mission to win the national championship. Uh, we had come off that devastating loss in uh, Lake Superior State 9-1. to And I believe this year it's a lot different in, in that we went out to try to prove things. This year it was all about getting the respect back for BU. You know what I mean? It, we didn't need the high-profile players to do these things. It's, it's just like all the BU teams in the past. If we go out and work hard, then we're going to have a good chance to win every night. Well, I'll tell you, they started off with a Peter Donatelli goal from Tom Pody at 8.44 of the first period, his sixth Donatelli, fourth line right wing, but he's been a superb player the last month of the season. This goal was a beautiful one. Pody fakes the slap shot, fakes the slap shot, holds the defense, Lockature in front, taking up space. Goal tennis right has to dive across, and Drury puts his 38th into the net, 10th on power play, Pody and O'Connell assists. An excellent crowd on hand for this 50th anniversary title game. The third largest crowd in tournament history showed up Thursday night to watch BU upset Michigan. We're going to take a look at some of the great moments of the 50th anniversary and part of it being the Hobie Baker Award presentation yesterday to Michigan's Brendan Morrison, a truly outstanding gifted player rewrote the Michigan record books. And that's presented to him by the great All-American at Denver, George Connick. Also part of the 50th anniversary, the uh, introduction to those on hand at the Bradley Center of the very first combatants for the title back in 48, Michigan and Dartmouth. Well, that was a superb team, and one of the uh, greatest hockey players that ever played college hockey was on that Dartmouth team, Billy Riley, and uh, Michigan had Al Renfrew, who later went on to a coaching career of distinction at the University of Michigan. You know, that power play goal presented real problems for North Dakota. You saw the fake of the slap shot by Pody, and you have to be concerned about that with the big Lockature in front of the net. He's a big guy, 6'3", 210, and that held everybody. So when Pody made that beautiful, soft touch pass over to Drury and he hammered it, uh, you had a diving attempt by Schweitzer, but he wasn't able to get over there. John Bates wins the opening face-off of period two for Boston University, and we're underway. Interesting to see how North Dakota will change things up here strategically as Chris Kelleher sifts through the defense. High shot off the shoulder of Schweitzer's short side. I can't let that happen. Kelleher centering out in front, couldn't connect. Chris Heron had gone to the net. Kept in by Bates at the right point. Heron behind that being checked by Williamson. Blake picks it up. Up ahead for Panzer, and David Hoopstein breaks it out for North Dakota. Hoopstein checked by John Coleman as he brought it over the line. North Dakota has picked up the hitting here in period number two. Murphy from the point, blocked by LaRock. Loose puck out in front, skated out by BU. Chris Heron, the freshman winger, slides it in and takes a hit as BU is in a line change. It's big for David Hoopstein. Centering pass blocked by Degerman. Buck to the BU line, just poked away from Adam Calder. Slides in deep into the North Dakota zone. On a first, Drury. Degger back for Drury. Back to Kelty, tees it up, blocked. Nice block by Matt Henderson. Kelty throws it towards the net, it's deflected wide. Calder and Degerman bump. And the puck is chipped to center ice. Matt Henderson by himself at the time being. Avoids the check, but offside is the call as Dan Bronin is playing a very solid game on the blue line for BU. Play that Belmont Hill School in Belmont, Massachusetts, a native of Woburn, Massachusetts. Uh, Danny Ronan, cousin Eddie Ronan, played the National Hockey League, also an alumnus of Boston University. Dan Ronan, the master of the hip check, one of the best body checkers in Hockey East. Had a good solid year for uh, the BU Terriers with seven goals, unexpected offense. They, uh, didn't think they'd get that kind of offense out of him, but uh, seven goals and some big goals over the course of his hockey season. Here's Jack Parker, head coach of Boston University, 549 career wins, the winningest NCAA tournament coach, 23 wins, 16 losses. Dougie Wook of 
Minnesota is second and run. Mason of Michigan State is third. But Parker leads all coaches with in tournament wins, NCAA tournament wins. The clock and tour and full, and it's full winning it for North Dakota. A rock out to slow it down for Shane Johnson. Pokes at the bouncing puck. Panzer comes away with it for full. It didn't work. Lockator starts a three on two, but his pass was too far ahead for Matt Wright, and Eric Schweitzer will cover it up for a faceoff. Well, this is the 50th anniversary of college hockey, so let's take a look at the 50th anniversary scrapbook and turn to the page with Ken Dryden on it. Dryden, of course, had many great years as a pro, backboning a lot of Montreal Canadiens Stanley Cup champions. One of the great goaltenders of all time in the NHL, and also one of the great goaltenders of all time in college hockey. It all began at Cornell for Ken Dryden. Played for Ned Harkness, also one of the great coaches in college hockey. He coached at Cornell and Union. Lacatour moved right out in front, but was checked as Kevin Hoopstein starts it back with Panzer. Heads up, heads up. Then at RBI to Ned Harkness. Listen, we'll have all sorts of calls from Troy York. <laughs> Lacatour can't gather in the bouncing puck. Hoopstein slides it ahead for Jesse Bull. Bull on at first, being checked in deep by Cody. Here, tries it loose for Shane Johnson. Johnson being checked. Tight checking game in the BUN. North Dakota really putting the pressure on. BU not able to bring it out of their zone easily. Puck coming loose. Hoopstein leveled by Cody. Tom Pody got Kevin Hoogstein reaching for the puck, had him lined up and made him pay. No icing as BU is changing on the fly. That'll be icing, though, as the pass intended for Peter Armbrust didn't connect. Well, that's an interesting one. BU dodges a bullet on icing at one end, and North Dakota gets one at the other end. Pody has both assists tonight in the game, and he's had a, a great tournament, really attracting a lot of attention. Tom Pody, the freshman out of Cushing Academy, puts a lick on Hoekstein. Good defensive effort by Pody, who has really upgraded his defensive play. He did not play in the two-game series against North Dakota at North Dakota. He was on the silver medal-winning U.S. National Junior Team, along with Dan Lockature out of Cushing Academy, a native of Worcester, Massachusetts. A battle of fourth lines now as Jason Ulmer is out between Brad Dufon and Peter Andrus for North Dakota. Uh, BU counters with Gang Greg Quebec, Bobby Hanson, and goal scorer Peter Donatelli. Play at center ice, Armbrust and Hanson dueling. Kelleher took down Jason Ulmer, and we're going to get a whistle, and it appears a BU interference penalty on Kelleher. So North Dakota trailing 2-0 gets a chance on the power play when we come back. Welcome back, Kevin. Boston University leads North Dakota 2 to nothing. Second period, 16 and change to go. Quebec 17 draws the interference penalty. North Dakota on power play. Quebec, the freshman out of Acton, Massachusetts, played his prep hockey at Deerfield. He had a huge goal against Michigan in the second. That penalty was take your pick. Is yeah, it Quebec? Be the one. Or Kelleher and well, it's Quebec. Quebec's a pretty good player, but uh, Boston University likes to keep Kelleher on the ice shorthand. Ian Calais bringing it down the right side. He's on the power play up front with Jason Blake and Matt Henderson. This is Henderson trying to leave it for Blake. It hit his skates and deflected and carried out by Sean Bates, who can really fly. His pass too far ahead for Albie O'Connell. O'Connell in the four check, but Curtis Murphy, excellent stick handling defenseman, is able to poke it ahead for Blake. He's over the line. Tried to set the play back. It was deflected out to center ice. And they'd be better off if they just carried the puck wide into the zone and set up a little possession. Anderson whistles it around the board. John Coleman there first for BU. And he's able to chip it out. Hustling down is Chris Drury. Schweitzer out to play it up over the glass and into the seats away from Drury before any damage could be done. Now this is the 50th anniversary NCAA team, and that's one of the greatest college hockey players that ever was. The athletic director at Harvard University, Billy Cleary, hero of the 1960 United States gold medal winning Olympic team, and just one of the purest hockey players that ever skated on a collegiate ice, Billy Cleary. Also the head coach of Harvard's only national championship team. Winning goal in overtime by Eddie Crayer. Drury and Panzer on the draw. Panzer not only wins it, but controls it, but has trouble getting it out of the zone. Drury in control, plays it back. Coleman for Kelleher. 
50 seconds left to go on the power play. Bouncing puck blocked by Schweitzer. And Curtis Murphy will wind up from behind his own net. Pass on the wing intended for Williamson was behind him. He was able to gain control and dump it in. Yeah, that's what they're doing so effectively. If you make an errant pass or miss with it all, they're jumping right on it, turning it the other way. Pass up ahead to Brad DeFaw. He backhands it into the zone. Kelleher there first. Went to tee it up, fanned on it. Plays it high off the glass, and it ends up in the seat. So a face-off will be coming to the right of Michelle LaRock. Always a dangerous clear in any kind of shorthand situation or in your own end in traffic. When you try to wind up with that slap shot and slap shot clear that time, just as you might in golf, when you take your eye off the ball, he makes a whip. Stick hits the dasher, I think, here. Jams his stick up against the dasher. Watch it right back there. Whoops, loses it. That looked like my backswing on a pitching wedge <laughs> shot when I shake it. <laughs> Draw back to the point. Dane Litke has shot the save by LaRock. Under 20 seconds left on the fighting two power play. Litke now back to Murphy inside the line. Murphy at his pass block. They didn't know he did not keep it in. I thought he just managed to keep it in at the line. But the linesman, John Dobzaluski, was right on the play and made the call. So offside is called against North Dakota. Face off just outside the zone. I tell you, B.U. gets a break here. Curtis Murphy is a very talented defenseman, very good offensively, has five power play goals, 11 goals on the season, and he has a little trouble handling the puck as it comes out to the point. That gives B.U. a chance to defend. Let's take a look at the offside. Well, it was close. Of course, from this angle, all you see is blue, but that... Can't this be the referee's call, I don't think, right there. Never do that. Curtis Murphy over the line. Beating for Hookstein. Shot, glove, save! Oh, Michelle Arak just picked it out of the air as David Hookstein had the far post marketed. Now, David Hookstein, the sophomore out of Thunder Bay, played for the Thunder Bay Flyers in the United States Junior Hockey League, snaps one off here just to the left of the dot. LaRock has a very quick, quick glove. I don't know whether that was going to go in the inside the far post, but he usually snipes those just to make sure the rebound doesn't get loose. Good angle. Oh, boy, what a snap right there by LaRock. That might have been inside that pole on the far side. David Hoekstein, the sophomore, not real big, 5'7", 140, has two goals this season against the U. Litke off the draw. His shot is blocked. Quebec is back on the ice. Power play up. It hits the post. Covers up. Peter Armbrust deflected the shot from the point, thought he had a goal, it hit the post, and LaRock gets a break. Well, what happens here is that Pierce gets wrecked with a shot right in the leg, and it takes him out of the defense momentarily. Pierce is sort of out of the play. You can see him go right down. That gives the defenseman Licky a chance to work to the inside. Puck goes off the skate of uh, Armbrust. Watch it right there, off the skate of Armbrust. Clanger off the pole, inside the leg of LaRock, he freezes, gets the face off. That would have been an interesting call, whether that would have been an intentional deflection in or not. Armbrust, hands up in the sky. That's the second chance they've had that they've gotten very, very frustrated on 14-52. Remaining, even up here, 5-on-5, five 2-0 five, B leads. Blake wins the draw for North Dakota, but Albie O'Connell is able to chip at the length of the ice. No ice. Aaron down to pressure Schweitzer. Sean Bates down low looking for Hanson. Jay Panzer pokes it ahead. Jesse Bull looking to move. Jason Blake with a shot. Saved by LaRock. He had a good look at it. Blake goes hard into the corner on Coleman. BU trying to clear. Doug Bates two on one with O'Connell. Slips and falls and has to guide it indeed. O'Connell there trying to avoid a check for BU. He's hit by Murphy. And here come the fighting Sue. Hookstein over the line. Leaps over Kelleher but loses control of the puck. Gets it back. Centers. And Kelleher will skate it up for BU. Great up and down action. Kelleher. Wrist shot. Saved by Schweitzer and he holds on. Well, that was one of the few times that North Dakota had the rush against Boston University with an advantage. But I'll tell you, BU gets off the bench on a change with extreme quickness. Coleman, Kelleher, they come down the ice, does North Dakota with a good opportunity as Hoekstein has it, but they bunch up right at the blue line. Hoekstein and Blake gives Boston University defense Coleman and Kelleher a chance to break them up. BU counterattacked on their own with a chance up ice. Face off to the left of Aaron Schweitzer, the freshman goalie out of Regina, Saskatchewan. Four shutouts uh, this season, tied a record set by Gerald Spike Schultz back in 1954, 43 years ago. 
Just under 14 minutes remaining in the second period. BU leads it 2 0. Indeed, Kelty and Ronan for BU. Bull for North Dakota controlling, trying to wheel out in front. A backhander is blocked. Here comes Jeff Kelty, tall, rangy defenseman. Quick shot and a save off of Drake Quebec. Puck cleared to center ice. Panzer for a bull. Bull looking to set the play, looking for Panzer. He was covered by Bobby Hansen. Uh, great defense by Hansen on the back check. Wing to wing. Off the skates of Hansen. Throwed it. Banking it ahead. Drake Quebec just tipped it over the line. BU will change up quickly. Dean Blaze also trying to get a change for North Dakota. Heavy collision at the line. Mark Tibbetts and Mike Sylvia. Well, you can hear the thud up here. Hansen checked in the corner by Degerman. From the point, Murphy. He's in a pitch shot. Michelle Rock might have been a little preoccupied with Panzer's attempted tip. Well, he had a lot of traffic in front of him as well. Huge goal. It is Curtis Murphy's goal all the way. Murphy chips it in. LaRock slows it down, leaving it to Cody. Shane Johnson. For Tommy Degerman sending Chris Drury away. He loses it at center ice and is hauled down. Shane Johnson. Working it out to center ice, tried to backhand it ahead to Degerman. Now on the forehand to Degerman for Drury. Drury circling the net, looking to make a play. Drury centering pass. Pony in, just missed far side. Degerman couldn't tip it home. Centering pass intended for Drury, intercepted by Matt Henderson. Pass a little bit too far ahead for Adam Calder. And Jake Johnson is there for Johnson takes a heavy hit. Not once, but twice. But the Terriers start to break it out. Here's Drury. Two on two. Drury thought he had Pody with him, but Pody was headed for the bench on a change. Ian Calais. Play it center ice. Kelleher. Matt Wright. Wright centering. Lacatour. Around the defense. Lacatour in. Check just as he tried to get off the backhander. Here come the fighting Sue. Jason Blake over the line. Rich shot off the shoulder of LaRock for a save. Hoopstein. Chipping it down deep. Kelleher there for the BU. Lockatour able to guide it to center ice. Chipped right back in by Dane Litke. Two to one. BU. North Dakota right back in. It. Interception. Hoopstein in. Score! David Hoopstein ties it up for North Dakota. Season, but he would like to have this pass back. He just feeds this one right into the black hole, and Hoekstein snipes it. There's Kelleher with the puck. Hoekstein sees it all the way, sits right on the pass inside the blue line, snaps one off right by the hash mark, upstairs inside the far near pole. Hoekstein's 26th goal of the season, and he was sitting on that pass all the way, just inside and under. Hoekstein, number 26, unassisted. 8.38, the time of the goal in the second period, and BU, after leading 2-0, has surrendered two quick goals to get the fighting Sioux even, and the Terriers call a timeout to talk about it. Dean Blaze has his fighting Sioux right back in the thick of it. We'll be back with more in a moment. Welcome back, Kevin. 11, 22 at the Bradley Center, Milwaukee, tied at two. David Hoekstein, number 26. Unassisted as he sits on a Chris Kelleher breakout pass. Curtis Murphy, a minute and 32 seconds before his 12th from Jay Panzer out of Grand Forks Central High School in Grand Forks, North Dakota. And Matt Henderson 
from White Bear Lake, Minnesota. 17-14, North Dakota getting ahead in shorts on goal. They started off first uh, five, ten minutes of the game, down eight to two. Well, they certainly have made some adjustments, both strategically and emotionally. Between periods one and two, they've carried the play. Here's Panzer with a shot, deflected up over LaRock. Aaron, Kevin Hoekstein to the boards. Mitch Vig keeps it in at the line, guides it into the corner. Tipping it out is Albie O'Connell for BU. Now, well, David, these things are seldom easy, and they won't be easy for North Dakota or BU. John Bates, nice pass, O'Connell. O'Connell shot, glove save, twice already covers up, no rebound. That's a dandy. Well, coming up on ESPN News, the first ever 24-hour All Sports News Network. We've got it for you with highlights, news and notes, the latest live press conferences, and a lot more 24 hours a day, seven days a week. That's ESPN News. Now, uh, David, Albie O'Connell has been hot lately, and he snaps one off here. Schweitzer cherry picks it with the glove, catches it off the heel, and the puck comes right down in front of where he's able to freeze it. O'Connell was a goal scorer in the in the Eastern Regionals. Well, they had goal. He had his glove in great position there, right at the hip as he's bent over to step that glove up. Matt Wright tries to walk through the circle. Shane Johnson along the boards. Johnson down low, looking to get the puck back from Billy Pierce. Shane Johnson a shot through a screen and a save by Aaron Schweitzer. Good save, Johnson. On a collision with Brad DeBaugh, they lock knees, and DeBaugh appears to be a little shaken up as Lockatour moves in for BU. And Lockatour around the net, tried to one-hand it out in front, was written off the play. Here comes Jason Olber, the freshman centerman, can't get around Shane Johnson. Armbrust tried to center it, it was blocked. Have to get around the defense, he's going to stick between your legs. Nice play by Johnson. Bill Pierce, the BU captain, chips it in deep. Peter Donatelli can't get hard. Extracted some revenge at the expense of Peter Donatelli. Big guy to four, six, three, four, five out of Apple Valley, Minnesota. Kelleher with a big shot kicked out by Schweitzer. Ulmer up to center ice, knocked down. Jaggerman can't clear it in. Drury. Kelleher. Traffic along the boards, finally a whistle. Well, that's the second big hit by DeFaw. He cracked Pierce earlier in the game. This time, Peter Donatelli, who's very aggressive, tries to get on the puck first, and he's beaten to the goal line, or at least arrives simultaneously with the big guy out of Apple Valley, Minnesota, DeFaw Carumba. What a hit. What a tremendous hit. Oh, oh. gee. That you almost here. have to put your hands over your ears. <laughs> This is one of these games where you make sure that you fasten the seatbelt signal comes on. You know, his brother, Peter Donatelli's brother, Clark, as we see the hits, was a clever sort of a scorer. Peter doesn't have any of that cleverness. Uh, has a big goal tonight out of St. Sebastian's, North Providence. He is a mucker, and he hit, gets hit like that a lot, and he delivers his shit. Curtis Murphy threw a screen, blocked by LaRock. He dropped at just the right time. Murphy darn near had his second and the go-ahead goal for the Fighting Sioux. Well, what makes Murphy very effective is that he snaps off wrist shots and he gets them on the net. Curtis Murphy's not real big, 5'8", 185 pounds, and he's got 12 goals, and you don't get 12 goals when you're a defenseman if you're not putting the puck on the net. I'm Kara Bird from Saskatchewan, played for the Nipple and Hawks, and Murphy is a very effective guy from the right point. Had the game-winning goal against Cornell in the West Regional. Jeff Ulmer whistled out of the circle, as is Chris Drury. So now Matt Henderson will take the draw against Mike Sylvia of BU. No, Drury didn't get whistled out. Yes, he did. Deggerman is going to take the draw. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sylvia. BU aligns its uh, end zone faceoff defense completely for that draw. And as it turns out, Calder controls for North Dakota. Down low, Henderson. Ulmer's on the ice. Kelleher was able to hit Deggerman coming out of the zone. Sylvia's pass was in his skates. He slides it in wide of Schweitzer. Murphy checked by Sylvia. Deggerman in looking for the loose puck for BU. It comes loose to Drury for Deggerman. In the slot, back for Drury. Couldn't handle the pass. North Dakota starts it out. Murphy was checked by Shane Johnson just as he reached the line. Mark Pivot. One of only three seniors on this North Dakota club, leaving it behind his own net. 
In Calais up to center ice. Buck shot right back in. Kind of telling. Looking, tried to hit Shane Johnson. Pass was deflected. Kept it at the line and a shot by Greg Quebec and a save by Schweitzer. Hanson for Johnson. His shot. Hit a leg and down as a BU player is Donatelli. He drew a penalty. BU is going to get a power play as the whistle blows. Uh, he did exactly that. He threw a penalty. Boston University, 8.16 remaining. They're going to go on. Man, if it is tied at two. Well, well the there's your penalty. The, yeah, Oscars, tell you. the Oscars were last Monday night. Yeah, that was a real acting job by Donatelli. Draw that call on Murphy. 8.16 remaining. BU on power play. It's uh, pretty effective in shorthand. That penalty would have made John Carter the former RPI grade and former Boston Bruin proud. He was one of the truly greats at drawing penalties. You had to like that one. Kelleher almost had his pocket picked by Ian Calais. Not if you're a North Dakota fan, you didn't like it. Kelleher over the line. Dumped in by Coleman. John Bates around the boards for Albie O'Connor. Coleman for Kelleher. Kelleher has a big shot. Here's Bates. Back for Kelleher. Beal wristed. A bouncing puck. Rebound. Hit the post. Dan Lacatour out front tried to stuff it home and hit the post. And we remain tied at two. You remember that last uh, situation inside when Drury got the goal? That Lacatour was a factor inside. BU's power play. Lacatour lines up inside. He's very tough to defend. Williamson comes over late to get a piece of him. Lockature hits the puck right off the pole. Puck just sort of hangs there, bait fishing for it. But goaltender Schweitzer reaches out and freezes it. That makes BU's power play very difficult. Last year, they used to line up big Mike Greer in front of the net. This year, it's Lockature, and Lockature is a load too. Six foot three, 210 pounds. Their number one scorer in the tournament. Uh, three goals, five assists for eight points. 121 left on the power play. BU sends out the Drury line. Calder and Henderson out as the penalty killers for North Dakota. It'll be Henderson and Drury. Draw one back to Shane Johnson. Tried to slide a pass through to Tom Pody. Intercepted. Henderson with a breakaway. He's in. Score! Short-handed goal. Matt Henderson. And North Dakota takes a 3-2 lead. University's best players, Chris Kelleher and Chris Drury, have turned over the puck. Drury's going to have the puck up against the right boards. He tries to make a cross-ice pass. Bad pass, bad choice by Drury. Henderson in all alone. Great move, Henderson. Boy, did he make a nifty move on LaRock. You're not going to stop this one. Watch, head deep, shoulder deep, right, left, come back the other way. Great move by Henderson, Matt Henderson. Out of White Bear Lake, Minnesota, had a goal against Colorado College. A goal and an assist against Colorado College, but the negative there is Chris Drury finished second in the Homer Bay, Hobby Baker ballot, and Chris Kelleher, two of BU's best, have caused the turnovers that have resulted in the last two North Dakota goals. Drury tried to get it back to Pody. The pass was tough to handle, and the Terriers will have to clear the zone. North Dakota now with an even strength goal, a power play goal, and a shorthanded goal. Yeah, but the last two unassisted on just passes into the black hole. You know, places that you just don't want to put the puck. Kane Litke working it out of the zone. We're going to have another penalty against North Dakota. Mark Pivots is going to be called for an interference. That'll give BU a five on three. Well, we're not too far away from opening day in Major League Baseball, and ESPN will have it for you. On Tuesday, April 1st at 1 o'clock Eastern Time, the Chicago White Sox take on the Toronto Blue Jays. That'll be followed at 4, a National League opener, Chicago at Florida. And then at 8, the World Series champion New York Yankees meet Ken Griffey Jr. and the Seattle Mariners. Opening day in Major League Baseball. Uh, pivots out of Alberta picks up the penalty here. Mark Pivots out of Edmonton. Big defenseman, 6'5", 205 pounds, takes down Degerman. Well, North Dakota has used its time out BU a few moments ago after North Dakota had tied it up 2-2, called for a timeout. If you're Team Blaze and if you're Jack Parker, what are you saying to your kids at this point? Well, I think uh, from North Dakota's standpoint, it's very unusual, Dave, 
to have both teams burn timeouts, and we've just over the halfway mark of the second period. No timeouts left. I think Jack Parker, they've hemorrhaged a little bit in this second period, giving up three goals to Murphy. The last two are the kind you hate to give up, two unassisted goals. He wants them to get this power play goal very important. Well, for the players, they can walk away from the rink after a practice or a game, but for coaches, the game stays with them 24 hours a day. When you're in the, the hunt for a WCHA championship, and then when you're in the hunt for the national championship, which we've been the last three weeks, it's, uh, it's really tough. It's tough uh, to sleep at night. You wake up, and you try not to uh, think about hockey, but when you do, the adrenaline's flowing. It's takes its toll on you, not the pressure, but just the lack of sleep more than anything. You try to sneak a nap here and there uh, sometime in the middle of the day, but when you wake up, like you say, it's all hockey again. <laughs> Dean Blaze told me this morning he slept surprisingly well last night, slept all the way to 5.30. Well, I'll tell you, Jack uh, Parker's had his nightmare come alive here in the second period as they turned two unassisted goals, Hochstein and that one by Matt Henderson. But, you know, you hate to give up goals in these kind of situations at any time, but the unassisted ones just kill you. Five on three for BU. For the next 25 seconds, Kelleher inside the line, looking, holding, down low, and hopped off from Bates' stick. Bates gets it back for BU. Looking, John Coleman slides it over to Kelleher. Down low for Bates. Bates drives to center, bouncing puck. Lockator can't control it. Gets it back for Coleman. Coleman takes the shot. Kelleher has Bates down low, back for Kelleher. Click and goes all the way back down to the BU zone. Lock it short, got the puck on the back end, just inside the hash mark, and couldn't control it. Murphy is out, so it's a five-on-four situation. On the rush, a save, nice save on the John Bates. Chris Kelleher from the left point ties it up for BU. Brilliant play to keep the puck in the zone. He just does it. This takes tremendous skill as Bates comes to the net. But a brilliant play by Kelleher. Watch him right there. Turn and flip the puck. Go tend it down on that bit. See, he was down on the shot by Bates. He knows he made up for a bad one earlier this period. But Bates with the rush. Goaltender Schweitzer went down. Kelleher makes that brilliant spin move with the point to keep the puck in the zone. Whips one at the net. Schweitzer hadn't gotten up yet. Went just in under the crossbar. Chris Kelleher, another unassisted goal. 13-56. Three unassisted goals in a row. When was the last time you seen that? That is Kelleher's 10th goal of the year. Eight of them have come on the power play. So we are tied at three. The goal coming at 13-56. And Ulmer and Pierce tie each other up off the draw. Murphy controls for North Dakota. Scales it in wide of the rock. Brad DeBaugh right into traffic, right into Dan Ronan, who's trying to pin it for a faceoff. Referee Matt Chigas urging the players to keep playing. Murphy of the point. He scored there. Blocked by Lacatour. Lacatour alone for the time being. Trying to spin and is checked by Pivots. That's a good play by Pivots. That's the way to take the good out of it. Jason Ulmer is checked by Jeff Kelty. Kelty around the board. Too far ahead for Matt Wright, but Kelty kicks it off and works it out of the zone. Jeff Kelty has played a strong game along with Dan Ronan. I tell you, that was a superb play by Pivots. DeFaugh checked from behind by Lockator as he teed it up. And the puck is clear. A penalty coming up on Matt Wright. He leveled Brad Williamson. Delayed call. Schweitzer headed for the bench. Blake centered it for Williamson. And it is touched up by BU. The Fighting Sioux will get the power play and a chance to regain the lead. We're tied at three on ESPN. It's been a wild second period here at the Bradley Center. 458 remaining. Matt Wright takes a interference penalty. Referee had a choice with interference or boarding. Brad Williamson. That's the corner of Papa. 50 shot save. LaRock and a save on the rebound off of Henderson. LaRock had to be quick on that rebound. 
Calder digging with Coleman on the board. And O'Connell chips it out for BU. Bates and O'Connell, the penalty killers for BU with Coleman and Kelleher. While Litke and Murphy will be at the points on this North Dakota power play. Calais, Calder, and Henderson up front. Hoogstein has replaced Calais. Calder trying to spin away from the tight checking of Albie O'Connell who tugged him down. No call. The North Dakota fans wanted one. Murphy trying to sift through the defense. Litke from the left point. Tees it up. Hits it high off the glass. Calder in deep. Seven eight, score! Seven eight pass and Matt Henderson has his second of the game. It's 4-3 North Dakota. one of those shots that gets lost from the left point. It goes off the glass. Calder ends up getting it. That was a golf shot by Litke out at the point. Nice pass in front by Calder. Puts it right on Henderson. Stick boy. Deep look up. He looked up. He knew Henderson was right there. Henderson snaps it off. No chance for Rock. 14th goal of the season for Henderson. Sixth on power play. Second of the period. He has a power play goal and a shorthanded goal in this second period. Wild and bully period. Boy, this has been almost a whole game in less than 20 minutes. Sylvia, wrist shot gloved by Schweitzer. Drury was checked and covered by Williamson. There was no rebound anyway for Drury. Aaron Schweitzer, the picture of focus. Boy, Henderson made a beautiful play there, but what a smart play by Adam Calder. 14 goals on the season for Matt Henderson, the junior out of White Bear Lake High School, White Bear Lake, Minnesota, played his junior hockey in the United States Junior Hockey League for the St. Paul Vulcans. Six power play goal of the season, but put a big goal star next to Adam Calder, the sophomore out of Port Arthur Prairie, Manitoba, because he made a great pass. Shane Johnson at the point. Looking for Drury. He is checked tightly. Sylvia can't walk off the boards. Johnson tried to dump it down low. Intercepted Calder at center ice. Over the line, offside. Jeff Holbert just in ahead of the play. You know, Adam Calder, the sophomore centerman for North Dakota, not only made a great pass, he has drawn a very tough assignment today. Dean Blaze wants Calder on Drury. And that is a handful for anybody. I'll tell you, this period started with BU with a 2 to nothing lead on Donatelli and Drury goals in the first period. Curtis Murphy from Jay Panzer and Matt Henderson at 7.06. Hookstein at 8.38. Henderson at 12.35. Kelleher of the BU at 13.56. All unassisted. And then Matt Henderson from Adam Calder and Dave Litke gave North Dakota the lead at 4-3. to 14th goal of the season for Henderson. Dean Blaze has done a sensational job with the Fighting Sioux, taking over for the start of the 94-95 season. In his third season, he's playing for the national championship. And right now, the Fighting Sioux have a 4-3 lead with 3.42 left in the second period. Great coach Dean Blaze has coached at the college level and high school level, assistant of Minnesota, assistant of North Dakota. Came here from International Falls High School, International Falls, Minnesota, at his hometown, played at Minnesota. Calais carrying down the left side. Ian Calais drops it off. Jason Blake shot, kicked away by Michelle LaRock, who went down the block with the stick. Banked off the glass and out to the center ice. Back to get it, Mark Pivots. And Lacatour into four check. Pass out to center ice. Connects with Calais, but he puts it on Kelty's stick. Jeff Kelty brings it over the line. Slowed up by Williamson, but Kelty gets to the corner. Lacatour has his pass checked. Matt Wright in deep. See you with two players in behind the net. Lacatour and Wright. This is Lacatour. Watched closely by Williamson. Williamson looks to clear and does. All the way on Michelle LaRock, so no icing. And Michelle tries to play it to Chris Kelleher. He was tightly covered. Kevin Hoopstein looked to dump it in. He was checked. Coleman cautiously around the boards for Kelleher. Kelleher banks it off the glass. Well, let's take a look at the Nike storyline to get you up to date on how we've gotten to this point in the hockey game. BU looking to win their second title in three years. They won it in 1995 in Providence. BU and North Dakota have both broken through on the power play, which is unusual for both clubs 
penalty killing units and Henderson the story right now with two goals one on the power play one short-handed why well, is the story not just in this game but the story against Colorado College a goal there that gives him three goals two assists five points in the last two nights he's uh, trying to get a leg up on that uh, most valuable player in the tournament most outstanding player in the tournament Curtis Murphy trying to chip it away from John Coleman who was down on the ice. Chris Heron able to slide it in deep for BU and they'll get a change. O'Connell keeps it in at the blue line. Picked up Drury down low. O'Connell couldn't connect with Drury and the fighting Sioux started back. Kevin Hookstein over the line. Curls and looks. Dumped it down low but Coleman was there. Bates banking it off the wall. Chris Heron carrying over the line. The freshman Heron, he had a goal against Michigan, tried to cut it front and was ridden off the play. The net comes loose from the mooring, so we'll get a whistle. This is a pretty good rush by Heron. He's a left shot coming down the right side, and he almost turns Litke and goes to the front of the net. It was just at the last moment that Litke was able to force him off. He didn't really get much leverage on that shot, but an excellent rush by Chris Heron down the right side as BU needs a tying goal here. 144 remaining it is what has been a wild and woolly second period. Drury against Calder and Calder wins the draw. Litke couldn't handle the pass. Avoids one hit, gets the puck back and dumps it in. Rock out to play it. Cody check. Shane Johnson up for Tommy Degerman couldn't handle the pass. Cody battling Jeff Holmer. Centering pass for Brad Williamson, the defenseman who had jumped up into the slot. It didn't connect. Dave Johnson, right to the board by Matt Henderson. Henderson tripped up. Calder and Johnson battle. This is Adam Calder trying to shake Shane Johnson. Johnson doing a good job clinging to him. Cody on Jeff Homer. Homer still against the wall. Still in control. Down low for Adam Calder. Calder goes down. The puck under him and a whistle. And the North Dakota fans wanted a penalty call. Yeah, the one that wanted the penalty call is on Johnson. Johnson put the hook on Calder right in front of the net and knocked him down. And I think the North Dakota fans reacted to that. Saw Johnson, one of the referees, she goes to call a penalty. But 55 seconds and change left in the second period. Four to three to score. I tell you, North Dakota looked a little, little, little bit like vintage Lake State, Lake Superior, is the way they kept that puck up against the wall in that series. Faceoff will come to the right of Michelle LaRock. Bill Pierce will take the draw against Jason Blake. Pierce is going to get whistled out, as he has quite often in this game. No. Yeah, Matt Wright now will take the draw against Blake. Blake wins it. Litke for Murphy. Murphy has the goal. His shot up high and wide. Blake with it. Trying to work his way out of the corner. Leaves it down low for Calais. Again, Calais checked by Chris Kelleher. Here's him to help out. Matt Wright with 35 seconds left starts the rush for BU. Through center ice, Wright with speed down the right side. Dropping it off for Bill Pierce. Wright gets it back. He's an up shot. Steered wide by Schweitzer. He got the stick on it. Murphy starts the rush for North Dakota. 20 seconds left. Celery pass saves LaRock. Rebound is dangerously loose at the top of the crease. Still loose. LaRock holding the short side as the puck was shot wide. Murphy keys it up. Save LaRock. Rebound. Score! David Hookstein with his second of the game. And it's now 5-3 North Dakota. Tremendous pressure. Curtis Murphy shot on goal. LaRock all over the place trying to make these last couple of saves. Can't get over to that far post. And Hochstein puts in number 27. There'll be an assist to Curtis Murphy from the right point. They just all over BU in the BU defensive end. This is what North Dakota does so well. And they did not do it in the first period. They're doing it now. A whistle blows with two seconds left. Play is on, and now the clock moves. The clock had stopped with two seconds left, thinking there had been a whistle. But we have come to the end of period two. And what a difference a period makes. 
Well, Fighting Sue left the ice after period one down by a score of two to nothing. But they had a tremendous five goal second period. And now the champions of the WCHA are just 20 minutes away from becoming national champions. Our score after 40 minutes, North Dakota five, Boston University three, back on ESPN in a moment. There will be a number of great memories from this 50th championship game, and a lot of great players have played college hockey in the 50 years, including this man, Chris Chelios, star defenseman for the Chicago Blackhawks, a multi-winner of the Norris Trophy as the NHL's best. And it all began at the University of Wisconsin for Chris Chelios, part of our 50th anniversary all-time team. A look inside the North Dakota dressing room. The fighting Sioux know there's just 20 minutes left between them and a national championship. Why? Well, they erased a 2-0 deficit and turned it into a 5-3 lead on goals like this one, Bob. Well, Matt Henderson got his 13th goal of the season, a short-handed goal. Chris Drury, a great player, made a bad pass off the boards into the black hole right inside the blue line. Henderson sniped the 13th goal of the season, second on shorthand. Then Chris Kelleher made a brilliant play at the blue line. He gets an unassisted goal, power play goal. He's 10th, 8th on power play. And Henderson would follow. Beautiful pass by Calder. That's a power play goal. His 14th goal of the season. And it looked like it was going to be a one-goal game going into the dressing room until Curtis Murphy created an offensive opportunity. Murphy, like many of the D for North Dakota, jumping up into the play and helping create the offense. Pretty well, everybody on back on the defense has free will. And like Sandy said, if our coach got silence as if you want to jump up and you got the opportunity to jump up into the play because getting that fourth man in a lot of times you can surprise the back checking forwards and get a good shot or a goal out of it that's exactly what they did right there is they got a little discombobulated to Washington University in the defensive end as Murphy rushed up the right side Washington University did the thing they absolutely did not want to do which was give up a goal in the last five seconds of the period Great rush by Murphy, and he created just all sorts of confusion. The BUN, the puck ends up behind the goal line, comes back out to Murphy again. He smacks one from the right point. Hochstein lines up just to the left, and then outside the crease puts it in. You know, Boston University in that period did a number of things you just never want to do, and they combined them all in one period. They gave up a short hit goal. You never want to do that. They gave up two unassisted goals to their opponent on bad passes into the black hole. You don't want to do that. They gave up a goal in the last five seconds of the period. You never want to do that. You combine all that together, North Dakota gets five goals, the most goals they've had in the period all season long. Just as Boston University, uh, as North Dakota, at the end of the first period, couldn't have played much worse and came out and had a great second period. Boston University, Jack Parker's had to tell those guys, must have been telling those guys in the locker room, guys, there's no way we can play any worse than we played the second period. This third period's up for grabs. We're down two goals. We just got to bang away at this thing. From North Dakota's standpoint, they have great quickness, great speed, great offensive skills. The one thing they can't do in the third period if they hope to win a national championship is sit back. Well, they have not done that throughout the season. When leading going into the third period, North Dakota is 19-0-1. That's pretty good. Boston University, on the other hand, has only come back once this year to win a game after trailing after two periods. Puck shot the length of the ice. Brad Williamson on it for North Dakota. Coleman pinching in, keeps it in for BU. Chris Heron, the freshman, being pinned by Mickey, North Dakota captain. Albie O'Connell couldn't hook up with Heron, and Hookstein bounces it out of the zone. Chip back in and then knocked right back out by Williamson. Aaron trying to sift through. Can't do it. Broken up Ian Pelé. Trying to send Blake away. Blake overskated it. Aaron chips it toward the net. Just wide of Aaron Schweitzer. Chris Drury on for BU in the forecheck. Brad Williamson cautiously out of his own end to head for Ian Pelé. He'll dump it in cross corner. Kelsey and Blake. It's Hoopstein down low. He overskated it. Degerman can't catch up to the pass. And Curtis Murphy has it at center ice. Murphy flips it in off the left wing boards. It's a late offside call against North Dakota. They'll uh, just change up. 
Drury. And center ice. Drury trying to pick up some speed over the line. Can't shift through the D. And North Dakota strikes it back. This is Adam Calder. He's drawn the defensive assignment to try to shut down the star offensive centerman Chris Drury for BU. Tough assignment. He's done it well. Here's Sylvia over the line. Check is broken up. And so far, North Dakota has done a good job masking the blue line. Jake Johnson carries in. Checked and dropped. But loose. Here's Over. Upended as he came down the right wing. Curtis Murphy fights to keep it in. Pat right at center ice. Can't hook up with Bill Pierce. Wright gets it back. Throws it in deep. Curtis Murphy on it first for the fighting zoo. Murphy pass too far ahead of Ulmer, and this is going to be icing against North Dakota. Well, Matt Henderson, certainly an unsung hero, but he stands to be the MVP the way he has played in the postseason. He has three goals and four assists for seven points in postseason play by far and away the sophomore. More points than anybody else in the tournament. Well, he has three goals, two assists, and five points in the semifinal and final. You know, David Hochstein's going to give him a battle as a number of candidates out here. Schweitzer has played well. A uh, number of candidates for Boston University. But, you know, I'll tell you, before you worry about most outstanding play, you got to win the tournament. And there's 18-04 remaining in the third. Lots of time left. Jesse Bull checked along the near side boards. Lockator pokes it in deep. Kevin Hochstein. Trying to hang it off the glass and out. Kelleher couldn't keep it in. BU will have to clear the zone. 1745 time remaining in regulation. Bull was checked from behind. Pivots ready to bank it out to center ice. Into the attacking zone. Offside the call is Jesse Bull just in ahead of the puck. One of the things that both of these teams have done successfully is to cut their penalties down. Boston University averaged over 23 minutes of penalties, a year, uh, 23 penalty minutes a game over the course of the season. They're well under that tonight and uh, on this afternoon, and North Dakota, really not a very penalized team at all. Only four penalties for eight minutes come in tonight's game thus far. They averaged 16 over the season, so they're half of that heading into the third period. Peter Donatelli at center ice with Greg Quebec. Donatelli feeding it back to Ronan, who just coaxed it into, well, tried to coax it into the North Dakota zone. He actually flipped it up over the glass into the penalty box area. So we'll get a face-off coming just outside the Boston University line. Well, I introduced some of those all-time players, the 50th anniversary team, some of the, you uh, see Brian DeRoche, the associate head coach of Washington University, talking to Jack Parker. But uh, what a thrill to see Billy Cleary, uh, John Myers, Central Minnesota, Matt, John Matchups from Michigan, all those great uh, players back in the 50s, tremendous hockey players. They just came with this. Healthy with a good rush and a shot, and the blocker saved by Schweitzer. North Dakota trying to work it out of the zone. Can't do it. Donatelli wheels and fires. And Schweitzer goes to his knees to block it. L.A. trying to chip it out. Does. Quebec. Out to center ice. Kelsey did. Just throws it out to the center circle. B.U. is changing up hastily. Here's Quebec. Trying to catch North Dakota in the line change. He was checked just as he got to the line by defenseman Mitch Big. Uh, that was not a good play. He's going to try to get that puck in the zone. He's trying to get off on a change. He can't dangle, diddle with that puck of the blue line. Get it inside. Albie O'Connell carries down the right side and backhands it into the zone. Big on it first. Bates in the forecheck. Murphy can't clear the zone. Blake can't poke it out. He keeps it in. Bates battling big down low. Bates trying to get the handle to it. He's not bad. Blake checked by O'Connell in deep. And North Dakota content just to chip it out. The Fighting Sioux trying to make a play mistake-free hockey. They lead it 5-3, 16-06, away from a title. The 1997 NCAA Ice Hockey Championship has been brought to you by Nike, who encourages you to participate in the lives of America's youth. And by Payday, caramel, peanuts, Payday, it's what you want. Welcome back, everyone. That's one of the great college hockey players ever, Jack O'Callaghan, out of Charlestown, Massachusetts, and Boston University. One of the stars of the 80 Olympic team, in addition to being one of the stars of this 50th anniversary NCAA tournament team. Matt Henderson on the right wing couldn't handle the wing-to-wing -wing pass around the boards. Kept in by Williamson at the point. Holman in deep. Now Sylvia. 
trying to send Drury away. He was checked. Sylvia overskates it. Carried in by Tommy Degerman. Degerman trying to stick handle through the defense and broken out. He's getting a little individual here late in the game. Coleman on a good play to keep Ulmer from breaking in. Henderson's pass intended for Calder intercepted. Drury up for Sylvia. He's offside. Well, Sylvia knew he had him caught in a line change, and he was just trying to cheat at the blue line, get a little jump on that pass from Drury, and linesman right on the blue line made the call. ESPN Tennis coming your way later today at 4 o'clock Eastern time. It's the Lipton Championship on the ATP Tour, part of the Mercedes Super 9 Tennis Series from Key Biscayne, Florida. Uh, that's a nice pass from Drury. See, that left leg just got up, just got up. Close. Good call, linesman. A scrum just inside the line. Buck comes back out to neutralize, and Pivots flips it right back in. North Dakota will be content here in this third period to clog up the neutralize and mask the blue line. They've got enough goals to win it. They need to keep BU from getting back into the game. But they can't get too passive. You have to play that one man in a way that gives you counterattack opportunities, not too passive. And you don't want to take too many of these early on in the period, 14-59 remaining, and you take an icing call. So folks uh, that I know in Waukesha, Wisconsin, Dewey King, who's an uh, alumnus of North Dakota, has received the Sioux Award, member of the North Dakota Hall of Fame, Coach Badger Bob Johnson is a freshman football player in Waukesha. Watched the game tonight this afternoon with his wife Peggy, and he's rooting for those fighting Sioux, I'll tell you that. That Lipton Championship coming up at 4 o'clock Eastern time should be a, as much a dandy as this one. Martina Hingis against Monica Sellish for the title. 5-3, North Dakota leading BU. That's why you don't want to give up too many in-zone face-offs. BU gets a shot off the face-off. Here we go, here we and go. And Ronan couldn't gather it at center ice. Jesse Bull and Jay Panzer try to team up on Ronan. Now it's Kelty and Panzer battling along the board. Buck still loose. Kelty trying to fend off Bull with one hand and kick it ahead. Billy Pierce pries it loose for Dan Lockatour. Lockatour tried to poke it out of the zone. He was checked by Curtis Murphy. And North Dakota doing a great job of checking. Again, the pass the flex. The Panzer, he couldn't move in. It hit a skate, and he almost moved in for a scoring bid. Uh, Pony tried to draw a call there, but uh, good not call by the referee, Kevin Hoogstein. Bought the Pony. Pony tried to get a hook call on him. Didn't happen. Hoogstein. Intercepted by Donatelli. Tried to hook up with Bobby Hanson. The play, though, offside. The attendance here today at the Bradley Center, 17,537, the second largest crowd ever to watch an NCAA hockey game. Well, the loudest, uh, the loudest, it's probably the loudest, but the largest crowd was here as well at the Bradley Center in Milwaukee. All the attendance records in the NCAA semifinals and finals have been right here in one of the great hockey venues in the United States, the Bradley Center in Milwaukee. Dave Shea and Bob Norton with you. Glad to have you with us as we are closing in on crowning a new champion for 1997. North Dakota leading it 5-3, to three, the Fighting Sioux. Trying to win their first title since 1987. But BU, the chance at 95, will have a lot to say about it over the last 13 minutes and 40 seconds. Tom Cody intercepted by Jason Ulmer. He slides it in the zone. BU has found the going very difficult. Here in the third period, they let it two nothing after one. That's uh, the first time in the last eight games that anybody scored Woo! over three goals against Boston University, and only one team to do that. That was Denver in the East Regional Final. Uh, they've been superb defensively, and but this North Dakota team has played a great second and third period thus far. John Coleman's shot from the right point was gloved easily by Aaron Schweitzer, and there'll be a faceoff coming to the left of the freshman netminder. For North Dakota. Boy, he has done a tremendous job since earning that number one job, 16 and 3, with four shutouts. Well, you got to think about how young he is, too. You know, he came here. This is, I always say, a 19, 20 year old freshman league, and this kid came here as an 18 year old midget out of Regina, Saskatchewan, and done a great job. Only started to play in the middle of the year, but his stamped uh, four shutouts on the wall to tie a North Dakota record uh, since that point in time, and he's very young, just turned 19. Two months ago. Aaron centering, but it was behind Bates. Bates batting at it. Big has him tied up, and the puck squirts loose to center ice. Coleman 
just gulps it into the far corner. Bates in on it quickly. O'Connell trying to settle the bouncing puck down. Can't. Blake out to North Dakota. Backhands it in deep. LaRock out to slow it down. Chris Kelleher. Nicely ahead for Bates. Wing to wing. Looking for Heron. Chris Heron over the line. Trying to drop it back for Coleman. He passed it behind him, and it creates an opportunity for North Dakota, although BU reacted well. Yeah, he just should have tried to drop that puck. Tried to make too clever a play and then direct that pass off the boards. The moving player is not high percentage. Here's Blake. Tees it up. Shot. Save with the left pad by LaRock. He dropped just in time. That was almost 6-3. Ian Calais checked as he tried to bring it over the line. Drury tried to move in, couldn't do it. Williamson sets the play for Blake, and he slides it in. Blake hammered down by Mike Sylvia. They both went down. The Terriers trying to catch North Dakota in a line change. Dan Ronan gains the line, fires it in. Back on it first, Adam Calder. Heavy hit in the corner by Sylvia, and a penalty is coming up on Mike Sylvia. B.U. Trailing by two, and Jack Parker cannot be pleased. His team shorthanded, trailing by two in the third. Go to power play just underway, and Brad Defaw backhands one up high off the glass behind Michelle LaRock. Matt Wright able to slide at the length of the ice. North Dakota lost four and power play tonight. Uh, warning penalty on Mike Sylvia. Not the right time to set the penalty. Almost in the half of the third period. Trying to lose is Henderson. Tried to get around Tom Pody, who broke him up on a nice defensive play. Litke and Murphy are at the points on this power play for the fighting Sioux. David Hoogstein, who has two goals, is checked as he tried to move in front. Here's Drury. Can't get by Litke. The North Dakota captain making a nice play. North Dakota changing up. They have 44 seconds left on the power play. Brad Williamson. As his pass checked in center ice, Matt Henderson, who has a pair. Williamson, back for Curtis Murphy, checked in center ice. BU trying to create a turnover and a shorthanded opportunity. Down by two, the Terriers might be willing to take a few extra chances on this penalty kill. Degerman, down to four check on Murphy. Williamson, touch pass for David Hoogstein. Over the line, Blake tried to center it to Hoogstein. He was checked by Sean Bates. Buck out to center ice. Just five seconds left on the power play. Bates at center ice. Coleman picks it up, slides it in. Coleman will go in after it. The defenseman, indeed, penalty is up. BU back at full strength. Coleman tied up by Murphy. Albie O'Connell is checked. O'Connell trying to move in front. Tried to slide it across to Bates. It was checked. And Belay able to work it out of the zone. Line behind the back pass for Jason Blake. Blake centering pass couldn't find Hoogstein. Hoogstein throws it through the crease. Blake tees it up, stick save LaRock. From the point, pivots, fires in deep. Calais controls. Blake off the boards, looking for Hoogstein. Couldn't handle the pass. David Hoogstein, who has a pair of goals. Dumps it in the corner. Chris Kelleher battling Ian Calais there. Around the boards. Litke keeps it in for North Dakota. Coleman trying to get it out, can't do it. Kept in, shot from the point. Blocked by Kelleher wide. Great pressure by the fighting Sioux. And finally, the Terriers able to clear. I say, BU having a lot of trouble. Great pressure by North Dakota. Lost in the a period where they have to generate some offense. Only have three shots on goal over halfway gone in this third period. Great defense. Big on it first, off the board, but not out. Kelty kept it in. Donatelli Clint tipped it, was knocked down. The BU fans looking for a call. Nothing coming. We're not going to get two of those. Calder looks to clear and does. Donatelli got one early on a dive. And <laughs> Probably might have struck one there, but wasn't going to get it. Buck shot in by Calder. Kelty, first man in on it. Jeff Ulmer in on the four check, but Kelty works his way through center ice, gaining speed. Kelty tries to get around the defense, is hauled down, and a penalty coming up on Mitch Vig. So the Terriers, trailing 5-3, get a chance on the power play. It's 5-3, North Dakota with 8-16 left to go. Welcome back, everyone. Mitch Vig doesn't like the call, but the reason he gets the call is he gave Kelty a little too much room, gets a left hand up in Kelty's face, takes him down, and Mitch Vig there 
having an outstanding season out of Bismarck, North Dakota. Didn't play a whole lot his freshman and sophomore years, but been a bulwark on defense for North Dakota here as a junior. Tom Pody did a good job to keep it in, but was checked by Ian Calais and forced out to Mr. Light. Two for four on power play. This is the hockey game, I think, for Washington University. They need one hit badly. Pody in the slot. Shot is blocked. Huge block. Pivot. Mark Pivots went down at the right time, and the puck was knocked down with a high stick, so the faceoff will come in the BU zone. BU with the Drury, Degerman, Sylvia line out. Shane Johnson and Tom Pody at the line. Uh, Pody's had two assists tonight. He might have waited just a shade too long on this one. He gets to the slot, dangles to the inside, just had the puck a little too far out in front of him. You can see on replay that rather than having the puck near him, being able to shoot when he was in that high slot, had to reach out a little bit for him. For it. And that gave Pivots the opportunity to get over and block at North Dakota. Big lead on faceoffs. But the only ones that count are the ones in here, these in zone faceoffs. Those are the most important. The other ones you can throw in a bucket. It's the offensive and, and defensive in zone faceoff. The blue out of center zone ones count a little bit, but not anywhere near as much. Curry with 130 left on the power play under a head of steam. Puts on the brakes. Looks to set the play. Johnson for Pody. Back to Johnson. Quickly, Drury holding, centering pass for Sylvia. He was checked by Pivots. Sylvia with it. Drops it back for Drury, trying to walk out front. Drury checked just as he tried to tee it up. North Dakota will change up its penalty killers, and BU will also get some fresh legs on the ice. Sylvia checked by Litke. Henderson picked it up. They've yeah, got to give a tip of the cap to call today. A good defensive play on Drury coming in the middle. They're doing a great job defensively. He was just not getting any offense on this power play at all. Not at all, period. I'll be O'Connell from behind the net. Curls looks to set the play. He's checked. Bates dives and tips it back to Kelleher at the point. Kelleher has the goal today. Here's Calais with Henderson. Trying to send Henderson in. Henderson looking to make the pass. Never got control of it. And he was broken up by Kelleher. And BU starts it back. Sean Bates who can really scoop over the line. Bates holding. Trying to pull up, lost control of the puck. Lacatour just on, has control. And Lacatour down low. Kelty for Bates. Bates center and shot went wide. Somebody may have got a stick on Albi O'Connell's shot right from the top of the crease. Good opportunity for BU as the penalty expires and the Fighting Sioux survive that BU power play. The Terriers two down with 6.05 left to go. Got it coming in on his first. Heavy hit by Bobby Hansen in D. North Dakota trying to get a whistle, and you can hear referee Matt Chico saying, no whistle, keep it moving. Boy, this has been one beautiful championship game, a great way to celebrate the 50th anniversary of college hockey. Quebec into four check, but Murphy did a good job to cozy it down into the BU zone. There'll be no icing. Great play by Murphy. Kelty banking it off the boards ahead for Hanson. He couldn't handle it. Defaw chips it in. Here comes Peter Armbrust. The freshman line on for North Dakota. Kelty around for Bobby Hanson. He backhands it out to center ice. Williamson backhands it right back into the Terrier zone, and Jack Parker will change up. Kelty again. This time intercepted by Williamson, but Pierce blocks his shot. Right to Lacatour. Lacatour goes to one knee, is broken up by Jason Ulmer. Boy, what a play that was. Lacatour's a load coming down the right side, and Jason Ulmer, the freshman out of Wilcox, Saskatchewan, beautiful defensive effort. Right, slides it in deep, locked the floor after it, Mitch Big on it. Right in the four check on him. Shane Johnson pitched on the boards, but North Dakota was able to clear. 4.45 left to go. North Dakota leading it 5-3. to three. Jesse Bull just outside the line. Slips it in deep. Shane Johnson on it. Around the boards for Dan Lacatour. Lacatour on the left side, flips it in on Schweitzer. He'll leave it for Calder. Adam Calder, the sophomore centerman for North Dakota, just flips it down to the BU line. Kelleher went to his knees. A hand pass is called. 418. That's all that separates the Fighting Sioux from a championship. Welcome back.
Welcome back, everyone. North Dakota 5, Boston University 3. Time a wasting in the third period. And Jason Blake, great defensive play as he whacks O'Connell's stick. Beautiful feed by Bates from behind the net. And watch this from play by Jason Ulner. Picks Lacachure's pocket as Lacachure was roaring down that right wing side. What a play by Blake, though, David. Huh? That was a big play because oh. that goal would have given BU 5 4 new line. Plenty of time. Well, BU has been there. North Dakota has been a while, especially for freshman Aaron Schweitzer. He was asked what it would mean to win it all. Oh, it's just, you know, a dream come true, basically, you know. It's a, it's a thing, you, you know, you hope to win. You know, maybe you get a shot at it, you know, one in four years and it happens your freshman year. It's just great. Well, he's now just 4.06 away from that dream coming true as Captain Dane Litke slides it in deep. North Dakota will try to bottle up the inner part of the neutral ice zone. BU trying to clear. Coleman for Kelleher. For Mike Sylvia. Sylvia trying to carry over. Kelleher tried to chip it in. Didn't work. Now here's Adam Calder. Can't hook up with Jeff Ulmer. He slides it in. North Dakota will get a change with 335 left. Coleman up for Albie O'Connell off his skate. O'Connell and Murphy go hard into the corner for it. They continue to battle. Jason Bates over to help out John Bates. Bates trying to walk out in front. Tried to stuff it in. Then his pass for Heron went wide and behind him. Heron throws it at the net. O'Connell couldn't tip it in. He was too deep. Buck on the right wing boards and BU has turned up the thermostat now on North Dakota. It's desperation time for the Terriers with just over three minutes left to go. Now the best friend, best friend right there will put clear out of the goal. Just going to court, aren't he? Oakstein in the forecheck on Kelty. Buck out the center eyes and we've got a whistle. Penalty on North penalty. Dakota interference. Let's take a look at our storyline, show you how we got to this point. David Hoogstein with two goals for the Fighting Sioux, a five-goal second period. And now the Fighting Sioux are just 251 away from repeating the efforts of 87. Scramble out in front of the BU goal. The Sioux looking for the clincher. Can't bag it behind Michelle LaRock. And that's big time goaltending work for the BU netminder because now with the power play, his mates have a chance to get right back into this hockey game. Coleman for Kelleher at his own line. BU on the power play. Drury with Sylvia. And uh, Shane Johnson. Johnson now has been moved up on the wing. Tommy Degerman with Sylvia. And it's. An intentional offside against BU. So they'll bring it back into the Terrier zone. Henderson picks up a two-minute penalty for interference along the sideboard. 2.36 remaining. Boston University on power play here. So face-off to the right of Michelle LaRock, who's getting a little help from referee Mike Sh Matt Shigos with his equipment. Dean Blaze. Boy, you're talking about not being able to sleep at night. I'm, <laughs> I would venture to guess that he's having trouble just breathing normally right now, wishing that 2.36 on the clock would fly by. Now, I tell you, referee Shegos was going over there to check the pads to make sure that this timeout, this little pause was legitimate because BU needs a breath. You know, they need to get a little break here. They have two minutes and, let's see, a minute and 46 left in power play, two minutes and 36 remaining in the period. Calais off the draw with Drury, and Drury won it. Fire, BU with 140 left on the power play. Drury on the left wing to Sylvia over the line. He pulls up, looks, has Coleman. Coleman tees it up. Shot is blocked. And Calais blocked it. He'll limp to the bench. He pays the price but made a big play. Well, they've done that a bunch of times. Calder has his pocket pick. But Litke is there to clear it for North Dakota. 210 left to go in regulation. Kelleher from behind his own net. Coleman, cautiously out of his own end, gains the line. Coleman drops it off for Bates. Tried to feed it back to Coleman. It didn't work. 
Degerman no. for Sylvia. Now out of the net is Michelle LaRock. Extra around for BU. Quick shot to save by Schweitzer. Is Albie O'Connell to come on? Back to the point it goes. Kelleher for Sean Bates. Bates shot is blocked. Coleman down low to the defenseman. Watched closely by Williamson. Clear. Can't do it. Kelleher kept it in. Good play. Shot on and it's deflected up over the glass. Schweitzer with the save and the clock stops with 1.29 to go. Boy, Kelleher makes a great play at the left point to keep that puck in. Pretty good baseball player when he was in high school. Had that great hand-eye coordination to keep that one down. I'll tell you, this is the only time that being short-handed is any kind of an advantage because with the goalie out, a minute and 29 seconds remaining in the third period, 38 seconds remaining in the power play, North Dakota can ice the puck or they can get short of the red line and throw it out of the zone without having to worry about a face-off coming back in their end. There's 38 seconds left on the power play, so for 38 seconds, BU will have a six-on-four advantage. 129 left to go in regulation. Bates and Calder will be taking the drive. Bates wins it. Tom Pody inside the line. Shane Johnson avoids a check. Down on the slot, Albie O'Connell can't get the shot off. Puck is still loose and under somebody. North Dakota. Well, it's a good gets move by the whistle. Yeah, good move by North Dakota there because it's highly unlikely unless you're really obvious that you're going to get a delay game penalty at this stage of the game with a minute and 20 remaining 29 seconds remaining on the clock all sorts of red shirts in front of that North Dakota net look at them all in front there like a chore O'Connell takes a whack at it you got Drury in front there big win off the face off and a clear by North Dakota BU will have to go back and regroup with just 20 seconds left on the power play 110 left in the game Bates flying over the line, checked as he came across. The shot, the length of the ice went wide. Litke fired it just wide. Less than a minute to go. Penalty almost up. Henderson ready to step out as Bates comes through center ice. He's checked as he did. Johnson fires in right wing corner. Litke fires it right back out. Banks at the length of the ice, and that'll be icing. A faceoff will be coming back in the North Dakota zone. To the right of Aaron Schweitzer, and you can see that the Fighting Sioux are poised to celebrate. And right now, BU has been reduced to prayers in hopes of getting back and tying this one up. Bob Norton headed downstairs to talk to the champions when they are crowned. Face off coming to the left of freshman goaltender Aaron Schweitzer. He has seen 26 shots, has stopped 23 of them. Curtis Murphy biting his lip, hoping the final 44.6 seconds fly by. Drury out to take the draw for Boston University. Matt Henderson for North Dakota. Drury wins it. Back to Kelleher. Rich shot. Save. Rebound. Loose. Save. Schweitzer the score on the rebound from BU. We'll have to wait and see who got it. There were a number of people out in front of the net. But Boston University, with 36.8 seconds left, draws to within one. Let's take a look at this goal as Kelleher with the wrist shot. Got it on net. The initial save. O'Connell couldn't reach it. Sylvia throws it at the net. The puck is still loose. And it looked like either Drury or Coleman on the backhander slipped it in. A better angle, possibly. Sylvia. Throws it out the slot. There's Coleman. He got it. John Coleman, the senior defenseman, has brought BU to within one, but now only 35 seconds remain. The Rock is back on the ice. Now heads to the bench as the puck is in deep. Curtis Murphy on it first for North Dakota. Can't flip it out of the zone. O'Connell couldn't get it on net. Here's Kelleher down deep. Sylvia and Henderson collide. Coleman fights to keep it in. Can't do it. Here's Adam Calder. Two on one. Calder shot. Score! Adam Calder with 12.6 seconds left to go. And North Dakota has a 6-4 lead. The Fighting Sioux begin the celebration.
second of the tournament unassisted as Jack Parker can only wonder what might have been Calder on a two on one had the option but also had a clear shot to the net and as soon as that one hit the back of the net the explosion occurred on the fighting Sioux bench and the clock ticks down the fighting Sioux of North Dakota who were on a mission all season long are the 1997 NCAA Hockey champions. great future this North Dakota club has they'll lose just one senior up front David Hoekstein and just two on the blue line captain Dane Litke and Mark pivots so Dean Blaze has a lot to look forward to but boy he will sleep well tonight as his fighting Sioux are the 1997 champions in NCAA ice hockey the teams congratulating one another at center ice and they'll be presenting the championship trophy before too long down at center ice here at the Bradley Center. What a great game. BU grabbing a 2-0 lead in the first. A five-goal outburst by the Fighting Sioux in the second. Gave them the lead. And then they held on to knock off a Terrier club that not much was expected of when the season began, but also has a bright future ahead. Let's go down onto the ice to Bob Norton. Bobby? Thanks for, thanks very much, David. Aaron, it's going to be a real thrill for you. A rookie and your national champion. Oh, yeah, definitely, you know. Guys worked really hard for it, though. You know, it started last summer, you know, working out all summer, carried on through the fall and right through the year, you know. You know, these guys maybe had one or two bad weekends all season, you know. Totally consistent team. It's just great for the team. Two to nothing. You were down at the end of the first period. I didn't think you fired in the first period at all. What the coach said to you between periods? Well, he just told us not to worry, you know, things would work out. You know, we've been down to these guys before. We came back in grad for us, too, so. He just told us to keep positive, keep on going, and we'll win it in the end. I thought your defense did a great job. Drury had one against you, but Drury and Bates, uh, two great forwards, but I thought your defense did a great job against them. Oh, definitely. You know, the defense and the four just shut them down all over the ice, and you know, they made one or two good scoring opportunities. You limit those guys to that, and you're going to win a game. Uh, thanks very much. I'll tell you, it was a great game, Aaron. A great way to start your college career. Thank you very much. Matt Henderson is going to be with us now. Uh, I tell you, Matt, you picked a real good time to get red hot in the semifinal and the final. Yeah, I hit a slow first, and uh, I got a penalty. They, could, they scored on the penalty, and I said I got to get, I got to get that back. So uh, I picked it up in the second and the third, and uh, well, the rest is history, I guess. You uh, you really sat on that pass. Chris Drury doesn't make many mistakes, but were you looking for that pass, that pass across the high zone? Well, I know they like to have their defensemen up high, and. Uh, they like to go D to D, and I uh, I saw that against Michigan. Their their defensemen were real spread out. I just kind of anticipated it, and it was on my stick, and then I got lucky and scored. Man, one more quick question. Didn't play a good first period of the team. What coach say? Oh, he just said stay patient. Uh, we got to keep work. We got to keep using our legs. Uh, I think we're a better skating team, and uh, I think we came out in the second and used our legs. Great game. Thanks a lot. We're gonna go upstairs to Dave Shea. All right, Bobby, what a great game. North Dakota winning it 6-4 to four to win the title. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back to the Bradley Center in just a moment. Welcome back to the Bradley Center as the NCAA runner-ups, the Boston University Terriers receiving their trophies. A great effort by BU, but that of North Dakota just a little bit better. Dean Blaze is down on the ice, the head coach of the Sioux, standing by with Bob Norton. Bob? 
Thanks very much, Dave Dean. I'll tell you, a great game. Uh, you started off slowly, but you played splendidly. Well, I thought uh, in the first period we were playing okay. We missed a couple of opportunities, a couple of wide open nets, and uh, they scored on, on a couple. So we we're down two to nothing. I just told the guys to stay with it. You don't really have to change anything. We're playing uh, pretty good hockey. Our third man got out of position a few times, and we made that adjustment. Other than that, uh, you know, the guys played a great game and stuck with the plan. And the, the five goals in the second period were just a bonus. I'll tell you, that goal right at the end of the period had to help, too. Five seconds, any time you score with five seconds left, that's a big help. Well, we've generated a lot of goals this year off uh, the cycling in the offensive zone, and that was just a good example of, of uh, BU was trying to get out of the period, and... Uh, we got a few opportunities in there, and David Hoogstein banged it in. Do you do anything to surprise you? No, we watched them against Michigan, and they're a character team. We thought uh, we could skate as well as them, if not a little bit quicker, but we knew we were in for a physical game and a tough game. Nice jump from International Falls to Milwaukee, huh? It's a long way. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Back up to you, David. All right, Bobby, and uh, boy, if you watched the first period, you would have thought it would be the Terriers that would be celebrating a championship. But the Sioux, after regrouping between the periods, came out flying in period number two. Murphy first got them on the board, and then David Hookstein tied it up a minute and a half later. 2-2 from there, the Fighting Sioux went on to win the championship, and he is standing by with Bob Norton. Bob? Thanks very much, Dave. Uh, this has to be real exciting for you and your brother. Uh, tremendous NCAA championship victory for the Fighting Sioux in North Dakota. Oh, definitely. You know, we came in, uh, I came in last year with my brother. You know, we didn't have the strongest team we got an early exit in the first round of playoffs but to come back for his senior year what a tribute you know just to him and him but also to our family i'll tell you how many guys told you you were too little to play division one college hockey oh geez that's uh you know i got an interview yesterday and uh i really have to thank uh, a guy back home dave bregno who uh believed in me when everyone else thought i was too small and it's uh even up this uh, up at this level people think i'm too small but i just go out there and try my hardest and uh see what happens i tell you i didn't think you fired in the first period you guys were flat Oh, uh, definitely. We came out with, uh, I think the nerves got the best of us, but uh, we just went in and uh, came in the second period and uh, buried five and the rest is history. Great win. Thank you very much. Back up to you, David. All right, Bobby. What a great cap to an outstanding season of hockey. The 50th anniversary of college hockey finds North Dakota's Fighting Sioux champions with a 6-4 win over Boston University. Coming up next, Lipton Championship Tennis, a great matchup between Monica Selish and Martina Hingis. And later on, Tennessee will face Old Dominion for the women's basketball title. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. <laughs>